Tonight, we're serving two delicacies, etouffee and gumbo. Dish one chock full of size, strength, and accuracy, possibly the flavor of the year, Byron Leftwich. Dish two, a southern staple for four years, mixed with speed, scrambling, some cutting, and you have David Garrard. If you like a heaping helping of quarterback stew, then bring your appetite. Marshall, East Carolina, in the GMAC Bowl next. It's Marshall out of the mat tonight. We'll take on East Carolina out of Conference USA. Welcome, everyone, to the GMA Bowl. This is Lad People Stadium in Mobile, Alabama. 63 degrees, clear skies. A capacity crowd is expected for 25th ranked Marshall against East Carolina. And join the third member of our broadcast team. That's Dave Ryan. Rhino. All right, Steve. Thanks a lot. Not many college football fans know a whole lot about East Carolina star running back Leonard Henry. Maybe they should with a big season he's had. More than 1,400 yards on the ground rushing. Set a bunch of East Carolina and Conference USA records. But he was a second stringer his first three years at ECU. One key reason for his thirds this year has been the hiring of strength coach Jim Witten. We implemented a speed program down in Greenville, running 40, 60, and 100 yard dashes at full speed all season long, three times a week, to help improve. Henry's quickness. Combine that with the discipline, diet to keep the weight on, and he's 205 pounds exactly where they want him. Guys expect Henry to have a big game tonight. Marshall gives up more than 217 yards rushing per game, and Chester Taylor of Toledo in the MAC title game lifts with that herd defense for 188 yards. All right, Dave, thanks very much. You look at the series history. These teams have not met since 1978. You see what the score was there, but the prior meeting, November 14th, 1970, these two schools will be tied together forever. That was the game Marshall returned back to West Virginia after losing by three to East Carolina in Greenville and the charter plane that went down. All 75 aboard were killed. Memorial services were also held on the East Carolina campus. As you look at our conditions here tonight, 63 degrees. Not bad for December the 19th. Feels awfully good, I must confess. I like being in shirt sleeves, man. It feels good. Marshall has won the toss, and they will receive. Kevin Miller will kick it away for East Carolina. Curtis Jones and Roberto Terrell are back deep for Marshall. And that in and of itself, I think, is, uh, is interesting, Steve, that throughout the season, most of the teams that win the toss have been deferring. It just goes to show how much confidence that Bob Pruitt and their offensive coordinator, Ed Zombrecker, have in Byron Leftwich. Marshall in the all-white uniforms. They wear all-white or all-green only for special occasions. And this is one of them. And the GMAC ball underway from Mobile, Alabama. Glad you could be with us on ESPN2. Terrell will just take a knee in the end zone. And Marshall and that amazing offense will take to the field first and 10 from their own 20. Byron Leftwich, the quarterback, the junior, and he's sticking around for his senior season. Pretty good collection of wide receivers there. The three of them combined for over 220 catches and more than 3,000 yards. Watts is their speedster. He's the guy they try to have stretch the defense. First down and 10 for Marshall from the 20. They open up single set back and they play a one back offense. Franklin Wallace is that one back. Left foot's a drop back to the shotgun. Two receivers to his left bottom of the screen, one up top. He's got to watch for his Darius Watts. Left foot, great protection all sorts of time. Now it's being chased. And that will be taken down. Hit hard by Bernard Williams for a loss of two on the play. And the offensive line for Marshall that protected him for so well, for so long there. As you look at the left side, Shulo content. They have been the big key. They've started every single game and more movement on the right side in terms of injuries. Well, this front three has not been able to get to the quarterback very often as witnessed by that first play. But look for Bernard Williams to provide a little bit of a pass rush on the outside. They go five wide receivers here on second down and 12. Here's Leftwich. Tried to set up the screen. It's tipped and caught. And it's going to be a touchdown. Ty Hunt. Off the deflection, returns it 12 yards for a touchdown. It went off the hands of Benero Marriott and right to Ty Hunt. How about that?
for the senior way to end his college career. You see Tim Rose, the defensive coordinator on the sidelines, he has to be very pleased with this little piece of serendipity. And on the part of Hunt, that's a great catch. This is a poor throw on the part of Leftwich. This is actually an easy throw right here, but he throws it behind him. Marriott is on the run, and sometimes you have to be coming parallel to the line of scrimmage. He's just a little bit too far in front, and the result is an interception and a touchdown for the Pirates. Kevin Miller puts through the extra point. How about that for a start? 57 seconds in. Ty Hunt, a 12-yard interception return for a touchdown, and the Pirates lead 7 to nothing. Well, again, here's a situation to where Bob Pruitt can't be too terribly worried because, really, this is what they're going to do. This is the young man that's got to throw the ball, and he has to overcome this early mistake. But it was a poor, th either a poor throw on the part of Leftwich or Marriott took a bad turn coming into the middle for the bubble screen. And I'm beginning to th think it was a little bit of the former because clearly, Steve, on the very first play of the game, you saw Leftwich audibly and doing all these crazy things. The first play of the game, you just have what you have. Watch the ball. You can see right here, he has to step back a little bit and a ricocheting off his arm right into the arms of Hunt. Certainly a good omen for East Carolina. East Carolina, they own the first quarter. They continue to get off to fast starts. This season, now with that touchdown, they've now outscored their opposition 119 to 25. And that's what everybody talks about. They want to get off to a fast start, but as we know well in sports, it's how you finish. That's where East Carolina has struggled a little bit. There's Steve Logan. He told us in our conference call when we spoke with him earlier, he said, hey, we've dismantled the opposition early in games, but then find ourselves trying to hang on for a victory. Curtis Jones is taken out of the end zone on that kickoff, and Marshall will try it again. Now, the case of Leftwich, he needs to come back here, get some short throws. In the first two plays, East Carolina was in zones both times, and so he needs to get comfortable. He needs to get a rhythm, complete a couple of passes, get his confidence. Neither of these. Marshall lost the MAC championship game after having a 23 0 lead. Of course, East Carolina dropped their final two games, both at home, blowing double digit leads in those games. Again, looks like left with changing the play at the line of scrimmage on first down and 10. And they'll put it on the ground of Franklin Wallace going to try the right side. Good second and third effort. He's just across the 25, out to the 26, taken down by Anthony Adams. And the rest of that East Carolina defense, Pernell Griffin is the big star for East Carolina. He's in the top five in the nation in total tackles. A lot of pressure on this secondary coming in, as we pointed out, 101st in the nation against the pass. A lot of pressure simply because of the fact you're going to see all sorts of four and five wide receiver sets. Second down and four. Appears to be a player down on the far side as you get a good look at Purnell. Steve Content is the player down offensive lineman. Not a very good start for the Marshall Thundering Herd. Back in Mobile, Alabama. If you're just joining us, well, you've missed a lot already. Ty Hunt, a 12-yard interception return for a touchdown. Giving East Carolina the lead. Marshall, this is their second possession. Again, even after a lengthy delay for an injury, they come up and they're taking plenty of time to get the play off the line of scrimmage. Again, it's Wallace trying the right side. He's very close to a first down. Give him three on the play. Todd, why is that? It looks like almost confusion or changing the play, the line of scrimmage every single time they come up. Which I don't think makes a lot of sense. I realize that they give him the autonomy to do that, but also for the sake of continuity and getting some rhythm, call the play in the huddle and let's get going. And again, let's not forget Wallace. Nearly 800 yards rushing this year, 5.2 a carry. That's not a bad alternative. Dave has more on that. Dave? Steve, you see Byron Leftwich checking at the line. This is all check with me plays. You see a quick sneak. This is a no huddle offense, Steve. And watching the Toledo game on the game tape this week, we noticed that what Byron Leftwich will do is get the signal from the sideline, the Marshall sideline. He'll then read off the play to his teammates. Now, at the line, he'll do a lot of changing, a lot of audibling. It's not actually a huddle offense, but he'll sometimes milk that play clock all the way down to two or three, very rarely. Ed Zahnbrecher, the offensive coordinator, told me only three times this year they had to lay up game penalties. He's got a great command of this offense. Zahnbrecher said he directs for his protection very well, and I think that's what you're seeing. 
As they go five wide receivers on the sneak. He's able to get the first down himself. You see the play clock down to eight. We'll see how low it can go. Three receivers to his left, bottom of your screen. Left was looking in that direction. Now firing across the middle. And it looked like there was some contact. And Aero Marriott was down in the middle of the field, but the pass was nowhere near him. Good. Good no, good no call. I think his legs got tangled up with the defender. Watch number 13 to your left of your screen. Break to the inside. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I stand corrected. That has to be. <laughs> that, that's, that's well past. That's well past five Travis yards. Travis Heath. And of course, Travis Heath is the one who should have been called for contact down five yards. It appeared from my vantage point the legs got tangled up. So, so much for my vantage. <laughs> Second down and ten after the incompletion. On the draw play, Franklin Wallace breaking tackles across midfield, and he can't break the last one. He rumbles down inside the 40, down to the 38, gain of 29 on the play. Heath had to make the stop. Of course, one of the advantages when you have the four and five wide receiver situation is it spreads everybody out. But Wallace actually, there's two broken tackles, there's three, there's a fourth. Number 24 is showing his strength and stiff arm as well as quick feet getting down the field. He runs a lot bigger than his six feet, 190 pound frame would indicate. Wallace will come out, get a breather. He'll be replaced by Brandon Carey. Steve Content was the injured player. He remains out of the lineup, replaced by Luke Sammons at the left guard position. One of the things that ultimately putting a caveat to what Dave Ryan was saying, Steve, and that is that one of the things that happens for East Carolina is that they're going to spend an awful lot of time on the field anyway. Their time of possession is eight minutes, eight and a half minutes less than their opposition. So that can make a Shotgun snap gets away from Leftwich, trying to fall on it. It's picked up by East Carolina. Down the far sideline to the 10. It's Jerome Stewart. Touchdown. A 42-yard fumble return for a touchdown for Jerome Stewart. And the defense is the offense for East Carolina so far. If you're Steve Logan, you can't have anything any better. Joey Stepp just has an awful, awful snap and left, which just can't get to it. Give credit there where credit is due. And number 26, who's hustling over there, for East Carolina, that happens to be Chris Sean Gilliam is the one who separates Leftwich from the ball, enabling the recovery and the subsequent touchdown. And the extra point from Kevin Miller is good. How do you figure this game out? Byron Leftwich is applauding, trying to get his team back in the game. A couple of mistakes, and it's 14-0 East Carolina. Automotive on demand. Check your local listings. Steve Levy, Todd Christensen, Dave Ryan. This is the GMAC Bowl on ESPN2. There is David Garrard, the record setter, making his 39th consecutive start at quarterback for East Carolina. Thanks to receivers, you already doc uh, documented how well Leonard Henry has done this year. If they have a go to guy, it would probably be number one, Richard Alston. First down and 10. Their first offensive play comes with 8.57 left in the first quarter. And they hand it off, and what a hit. Leonard Henry, the running back, absorbed a big hit there by Chris Crocker after the gain of six. And the East Carolina offensive line looks like this. Brian Rimp, the left tackle, he's the star on the, of this group. Defensive line has to get it going, particularly against the run. They have really struggled, but the big man for them has been all Mac performer number 34, Ralph Street. Second down and four. Three receivers to Garrard's left. Little play action and throw it out into the flat. And there's Terrence Copper. And Copper will have enough for the first down for East Carolina after the gain of eight. Marshall. Marshall has been put in an unenviable position, Steve, and that is to have to be able to stop these people. And, of course, the linebacker position, number five, Max Heath, their 150 tackle guy, is their leader in the interior. And the secondary, Yancey Satterwhite, three interceptions to lead the way. Crocodile had that huge hit there. Henry's still feeling that. 
four receivers in the game for East Carolina. Well, as I said, you know, they've been so dependent on their offense. You know, their defense does give up 26 points a game. And if those first two plays are any indication, it would seem to me you see the young man who put the big hit on Henry earlier, and that's Crocker. We need a few more of those big hits because, at least early on, Steve, East Carolina just seems to. What's the, what's the, what's the cliche phrase? Want it more. That's it. They want it more. They're trying to, we've had problems with the clock here. I believe it's supposed to be 8.15 left in this first quarter. There you see. We set up the clock. And now they wind it down again. It's 12. Never mind. You get the idea. Here's Gerard on first down and 10. And Henry is hit and hit hard again. That time Alonzo Jones put the stick on him in the backfield for the loss of four. Well, they came with a blitz. They came with an all-out run blitz, and they guessed right there on first down. Take a look at all the white shirts that are going to be coming. Bam, bam. Here we come. Guess what? We're there. No, not enough not enough people to block the white shirts. And as a result, guessing right as a Marshall defense, Larry Davis, senior linebacker. That six foot two, 200 pounds is fairly common out at the collegiate level. They want outside linebackers that can run and cover as well as blitz. Second down and 14 now. This time they play action to Henry. Garrard buys himself some time. Able to set up and throw and complete to Arnie Powell. And he's got the first down. And he's out to the 36-yard line. Gain of 16 before Davis brought him down. The misdirection is not necessarily what fooled Marshall, but Powell does a great job of setting down in the middle of the field. Watch right here. You're going to see number five get to the middle and then just sit down. Watch him just sit down. Instead of keep running with his quarterback, he sits down. And as a result, Yates is sitting there saying, hey, you know what, I know this play, I'm going to run with him. But instead, as a result of Powell sitting down in the middle, he gets the completion first down. Well, Powell got the first down, he lost his shoe. And he's out for a breather. He'll work on that, get back in the game, they option. And Gerard will keep it himself. And now he pitches it back, and leveling it to Richard Austin down the sideline. Down to the eight yard line. We mentioned at the top of the show, Steve, that one of the things that can be very effective for East Carolina is Gerard's ability to run the option. He has passed the line of scrimmage. He's got a, what, a four or five yard gain. Great athletic ability. He sees that he's about to go down, pitches to Alston. Great blocking downfield. And as a result, now, here are the Pirates knocking on the door inside the 10 yard line, first and goal. That, that's your unconventional option play, right? Yeah, it is. But you know what? You've seen Eric Crouch do it a bunch of times. You've seen. Randall L. do it a bunch of times. But those are 190 pound quick guys. This guy's 250. The play goes for 27 yards. First down and goal. It's Carolina looking to blow this baby open. Here's Gerard the option, keeping it. Touchdown. And he goes into the end zone untouched. Made it look easy. The nine yard score for Gerard. Ralph Street, the defensive end, had to make a decision. Am I going to go after the quarterback or am I going to go after the back? He opts to go after the back. As a result, there's no run support. Watch right here. Watch street number 34. He decides to go after Henry. There's nobody that comes up and takes Gerard, and as a result, he goes into the end zone untouched. Seventh rushing touchdown this season for Gerard. Who is their third leading rusher on the team? And Kevin Miller having a field day. He's already got three extra points. Lives here. Remember when you were a little kid and you had that salt? Remember the little girl? Remember the thing on the side when it rains, it pours? The snap is perfect, but Curtis Head just can't come up with it. And whoop, 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 whoop. He does a nice job, as I pointed out. And of course, you're saying at home, how come that wasn't roughing the punter? Well, of course, once the ball is muffed, he is a runner and you can go after him. And that's exactly what Antoine Yelvin did. Curtis Head's grandfather, Elmo, played basketball at Kentucky. Great off rough. How about that family time? <laughs> On first down and ten. Here's Gerard handing off to Leonard Henry, trying the right sideline. He's cross midfield inside the 45 after the gain of 11. This is the GMAC Bowl from hospitable Mobile, Alabama. 25th ranked Marshall taking on East Carolina. A couple of explosive offenses. 
know, we really haven't seen the explosive offense out of East Carolina either, despite the fact they have 21 points. Well, watch number 22, and I say for this reason. Steve, you realize that over 1,400 yards this guy has had, his biggest carry game has been 26. He's averaged less than 20 carries per game. The guy's averaged almost 80 yards of carry. Five carries for 22 yards so far today. And on the option there, Terrence Copper. Out to the 41-yard line. Talking about the lack of the explosive offense, two of the three touchdowns for East Carolina have been defensive touchdowns. And Garrard, just 28 yards of total offense to this point. And again, he's up 21-0. Well, you know how you want to promote those games, Steve, where you have the irresistible force and the immovable object? Yeah, we do it all the time. Yeah, but yet in this case, the offense for Marshall, the defense for East Carolina is weakest at that point, which is pass, and vice versa. Marshall, East Carolina's great running the ball. Run defense they've been so poor. Arnie Powell was in motion. <laughs> Phoenix Evans might have jumped the left tackle, who was the backup for Brian Rimp. We'll see. Line of snap, ball start. Offense, five yards, still second down. William Lamagne, the referee out of the Big Ten, a Big Ten crew. You know, Steve, we did talk about the fact that you've got a quarter ton of quarterbacks in this game, 500 pounds combined. They're hanging in there despite the fact they've got people all over them. Take a look at Gerard here. He just refuses to go down, and as I said, that's why the that's why the fist of cuffs ensued as we go down to Dave Ryan. All right, we'll watch this play first. We'll finish up about Dave Gerard and some weight issues, Steve. Wow. Marty Powell is the receiver, and he was crushed. We heard the good pop in the booth. Dave, you probably heard it a lot better on the field. Yeah, no question here on the sidelines. So Gerard's listed at 6'1", 249. When he was a senior in high school, he worked as a pizza delivery guy. There's only one problem. He let his boss <laughs> let David make the pizzas. He prepared one for his customer and one for himself. He ate so much pizza, he ballooned up to 270 pounds when he got to campus in Greenville. Much more disciplined diet now, down to that svelte 249. That's great, Dave. Thank Here's Gerard getting it out and wide open. But as Richard Alston, all sorts of running room, cuts up the middle now, and he's inside the 10-yard line. Tartley finally brought him down after the gain of 32, and I do mean wide open. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that there was a defensive breakdown. <laughs> Take a look at the blitzes. The blitzes are going to come, and all of a sudden here, there's nobody on him. If you're going to blitz, somebody has to come over and take. The cornerback comes. Look at him come out of the backfield. There's nobody left. Absolutely nobody. Terrible job on the part of the defense for Marshall, but up to this point, he was playing particularly, had actually been playing well. First down and goal. For East Carolina. Gerard will keep it on the option. And pick up two on the play. Marion Hicks brought him down. That was not the right time for a mental breakdown in the part of the secondary for Marshall. We mentioned the fact that Gerard was going to run the option. Steve, I, I think at this point, with ten and a half minutes remaining in the second quarter, he's run it at least a half dozen times, so clearly that was an integral part of their arsenal. Second and goal. Locks a room to the right side for Gerard, but he hands it off as they try the left side with Leonard Henry. No gain on the play. Marshall really needs to force a field goal attempt here, Steve. East Carolina, brilliant inside the red zone in terms of points. Look at that, 37 to 38. Interesting to note, the one time they didn't get points in the red zone, they did it themselves. They let the clock run out in a blowout win over Army. Otherwise, they would have been perfect. Three tight ends here on third down and goal from the seven. And Garrard on the option, waiting for the last second. Pitches to Richard Alston. And he's knocked out of bounds, loss of one on the play. Yancey Satterwhite made the hit. And we'll get a field goal look from East Carolina. Well, clearly at this point, Marshall is not fooled anymore by this particular play. Look at the support from the secondary. Can't decide, can't decide, and at the last minute he throws it, but there, there are a number of white shirts back there, and of course they did exactly what we talked about they needed to do, and that is force a field goal attempt. Kevin Miller on to attempt a 25-yard field goal. He's hit his last seven in a row. Marshall got a pretty good push there, but not a problem for Miller, who is good from 25. 9.04 to play in the first half. 
It's all East Carolina. And this party-like atmosphere here in Mobile, but not for Marshall. Coordinator for East Carolina has been outstanding throughout his career and always a great interview for us. Impressive not only with his animation but his candor. And I thought it interesting as you take a look at his resume. When we asked him the question about Pernell Griffin, you know, if he was the best linebacker, he said, Well, you know, when I was coaching at St. Augustine's back in 67, <laughs> he was talking about some kid in high school. Just like a, just like a great coach, he knew he knew about the kid in detail. Great guy. And by the way, I worked out with his two kids at the Y, his two sons. Who was Who putting up more weight, them or you? Come on. Get out of here. You they were, me? right? No. Marriott on the reception. <laughs> Gain of four on that play. You know, you mentioned Rose talking about Griffin and, and what he said about him with all, the, with all the, the players he has coached. He said Griffin is the best instinctive football player he's ever, ever been around. I mean, what a statement well, that, that is. That is. That's high praise. That's high praise because at the end of the day, if you're playing middle linebacker, that is what it's about. It's not about how much you bench and what you run the 40 in. Do you make tackles? Do you plug holes? Do you make the people around you better? And he does. Second down and six. It's Canero again. Denaro Marriott on the reception, gain of two. Marriott has certainly benefited by the fact that Darius Watts and Josh Davis have put up some such great numbers that most of the defensive coverage might go to those two, leaving Marriott free to make his catches. And he has really come on late in the season, of course, as you pointed out in the game against Toledo. He did drop one earlier, but one great thing about this offense is you will get another shot at it if you do drop one. Especially when you're down 24 to nothing. This is third down and five now. Five receivers in. Three to the left of Byron Leftwich. Coming with the blitz. Here they come, feels the pressure and throws, and Watts could not hang on. Had good coverage on the play from Jerome Stewart, but it looked like Watts could have had that one. Well, Steve, this is going to be four down territory here at the 35-yard line. I'm guessing, and you're right, Watts really needed to catch that ball. Leftwich has been betrayed a lot of times by his receivers here in the first half, Steve, not just on the drop balls, but on some poorly run routes, and, of course, the ricochet early on off of Marriott's arm, which, you know, started this downfall. Fourth and five and going for it. 12 of 20 during the regular season for Marshall on fourth down conversions. They do not blitz, they rush just three. And that's why Leftwich has all sorts of time to survey the field. And Ron Watts for the touchdown. Darius Watts, the leader in the nation among receivers and touchdown catches, will add to it a 35 yarder from Byron Leftwich, and Marshall is on the board. Jerome Stewart in coverage, just let him get behind it, because usually, Steve, in that situation where you just have to get a first down, usually what you do is you're gonna hover over the five, six, eight yard area. They're in a pretty good coverage up to that point, but right there, he breaks down a little bit. Watts goes long, trusts the great arm of number seven. They're going for two, it's Trod Bugs, and he gets there. On the two-point conversion for Marshall. Well, that shocked the heck out of me for this reason. 6.35 remaining in that half. Seems a little early to go for a two, but evidently Pruitt decided, you know what? We've got it going. Let's see if we can get a little more momentum. And psychologically, that has to bode well for the thundering herd because this is the best news or really the only piece of good news they've had here in the first half. Take a look. Everybody's anticipating. It's the old swinging gate. Laterals the ball. Has his people on the side. Breaks a tackle in the backfield and Bugs breaks two or three tackles and gets in for the two-point conversion. And now as a result of that two-point conversion, they're two scores away. Back in Mobile, Curtis Head is on to kick. They go for the two-point conversion, Todd. Want to get crazy and it be an onside kick here. Well, well, he's already proven to us as a punter that he can kick left-footed. But you know what, Steve? The one part of the game, strange enough, special teams have struggled. We know the offense has been very poor. But really, I don't think the defense has played that poorly. Two defensive touchdowns and the two scores that they got were a result of terrific field position. So really, the best part of the game right now for Marshall is their defense. I think it should kick it deep. Marvin Towns is deep for East Carolina. All-conference USA freshman team as a kick returner 
but he won't get a chance this time around. Let's go down to Dave Ryan. Okay, we're joined by John Finnegan. He's the chairman of GMAC. Third year your organization has been involved with this bowl game. How has it progressed from year one to year three? Well, Dave, the great thing is we were able to get in on the ground floor of this game. It's expanded every year. The city of Mobile is so enthusiastic. And this year we're really the sponsor of the game, so it's, it's been terrific. I mean, we've, we've grown with the bowl, and the bowl is a great event. How have several youth programs in this area been connected to your bowl game? Well, the great thing about the event is that the, the byproduct of it is all the bowl does for youth, uh, inner city youth. First, they have the camp focus for fatherless children. They have a great reading program. They have great corporate scholarship program sponsors. So it's terrific overall. It's a win-win for everyone involved. Thanks so much. Enjoy the rest of the game. Good day. Thanks. All right, Dave, thanks. Garrard was airing it out for Richard Austin, and saw flags on the play. And if Crocker somehow could have looked back soon enough, he knows that he's beat to the post, but Garrard threw the kind of pop-up that you used to have when you're playing 500 at home. Remember that when you used to catch the ball? Try to, you know. There are two penalties. is going to be holding an interference, and, of course, they'll take the ladder because that's going to be 15 yards. But Crocker didn't know that. I don't know if the wind caught it or maybe it slipped out of his hand, but that was one of those that... At home, his buddies would be going quack, quack, quack. Defensive pass interference, 15 yards, automatic first down. Here's Crocker with his back turn. Now the ball is up in the air, and he's not sure. And so rather than let him have a big game, he pulls on the shoulder. You know what? And you say to yourself, that's blatant, but it's only 15 yards right. instead of the 40-yard yards that it would have been. Stanford okay. reverse. And it's Richard Alston with running room. Across the 45, gets a nice block to the 40. Down to the 30. That's showing you the wheels down the sideline. And he is dragged down at the 7-yard line by Terrence Tartley. Alston can motor. Gain of 58 on the play. Well, it's a great, it's a great job of this, Steve. They've been running the option forever. Now the receiver's going to come around and get the pitch. Now watch at the bottom of your screen and tell me if you think this might be holding. They're able to get away with one here. But it's a great call. Great call. Watch the defender right here. Looks like he's got a hold of some. But as they say, as Ray Chester used to tell me, you get away with it, it's a good play. And as you pointed out, Alston's got some wheels. First and goal from the seven now. East Carolina looking to add to their lead. And they win. Leonard Henry, wow, making it look easy. Garrard went in untouched earlier. There's Henry standing up with a seven-yard touchdown right through the Marshall defense. And remember inside the 20 early on, we talked about how with that, you know, they kept running the option over and over again. What did it do? Now they have the misdirection. And look at the shirts. Look at this. I dare say I dare say that Steve Levy could score on now. All right, even tackled the two, but still, that was a really big hole. And Henry marches in completely untouched. Here is Kevin Miller on the extra point. Puts it through. They go two plays, 80 yards for the touchdown. For Leonard Henry, his 17th rushing touchdown of the season. Give credit where credit's due, Steve. Doug White, Corey Schmidt, and Brandon Pope are the ones that create that cavern, a veritable chasm for Henry to run through. But again, it, it is set up, and we mentioned earlier, Steve, it appeared that Marshall had finally figured out the option, right? They appeared finally figured it out and kept there. stuffing it. And the one time they go with it, one time they go with the reverse, it's a huge play. Olsen's had a couple of big plays. You know, Dave talked to the, the GMAC people here. The ranked teams are not going to want to come back to this fall. When it's first year, East Carolina was actually ranked number 20. They lost to TCU. Last year, TCU came here. They were ranked 13th. They lost to Southern Miss. Here, Marshall comes in, ranked 25th. And they find themselves trailing 31 to 8 with six minutes left in the first half. I wonder if Dave can uh, talk with Bob Pruitt again. <laughs> I'd like to hear what he has to say now. I, I, I don't think he well. What can he say? One and done, huh? Yep. Kevin Miller has been active. There's extra points in the field goal. And now kicks it away. Very, very short kick. That bounced to the 20-yard line. Curtis Jones had all sorts of problems with it. Loose football. And East Carolina has it. 
What else could go wrong tonight for Marshall? Well, see, Kevin Miller up to this point, Steve, had been kicking nothing but touchbacks. So finally, you're a little bit deeper than you normally are. And as a result, you're lulled to sleep. You don't think you're going to get an opportunity. But this is a poor job by, by Jones. Okay, now on the hop, just catch it. Just catch it. Just catch it in your bread basket. Now he's looking downfield. He's concerned about getting hit. And the result is that Heath is able to get on top of the ball before Jones can recover. Once again, everything going the way of the Pirates. Of course, the kicker says, yeah, okay, I didn't get the touch. I didn't get the touchback, but he did get a turnover. Here's Garrard off play action. The option kicks the right side. And it's Richard Alston. Stay on his feet as long as he can. Very close to another first down. Travis Heath able to recover on that fumbled kickoff. Steve, inevitably, when you match up teams from different conferences, unless, you know, it's, say, the, the Big 12 or it's the Pac-10 or teams that you know, sometimes when you get together, you're really not sure about the level of competition. Clearly, in this case, it would seem the Conference USA has put together a little bit more of a tougher group, and I say that only because of what I'm seeing on the field. That's not to denigrate those in the MAC. It's simply the fact that at this point, it seems... But East Carolina has had a tougher road to hoe with some of those teams. That was Leonard Henry, the ball carrier. As you look at the bowl breakdown by conference, there you see Conference USA sending four, and you know, Max sending two. Now, this is not an exact science by any stretch, but clearly at this point, I'm sure that the people in Conference USA are saying to themselves, We were wondering about North Texas. The North Texas Sun, Sun Belt. <laughs> They're the one team on first and goal now. Here's Garage going to keep it, and again, this time at least he was touched, but it made it look relatively easy. A six-yard touchdown for East Carolina. Second rushing touchdown of the night for David Garrard, and it's all Pirates. Well, it's a good thing that Dave Ryan and I got together and predicted that uh, East Carolina have 38 points before halftime. I'm telling this is... You can't predict now in college football. I don't think you can. I think parity is such a reality. It, 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 sometimes the information you get on paper is useless. Who Kevin figured Miller this? puts it through. You couldn't. 14 points in a minute 13 for East Carolina. We documented earlier their quick strike offense. Short scoring drives, not taking much time off the clock. And here they are blowing out the thundering herd 38 to 8. Lives here. Early in the second half, the Thundering Herd cut the Pirate lead to 38-15 when Ralph Street returned a David Garrard interception 26 yards for a touchdown. 12 minutes 55 seconds now remain in the third quarter right here on ESPN Classic. The moon over Mobile. Well, yesterday, we taped a little advancer to preview this game for ESPN. Normally, we get it done in one take, but yesterday required two. Dave Grout is the quarterback for East Carolina, but on the other half of this quarter ton is Byron Lefwich, the quarterback for Marshall, having arguably the greatest season in the history of the MAC. The first quarterback ever to throw for over 4,000 yards and with an incredible percentage of touchdown to interception. That is 38 touchdowns to seven interceptions. They had four quarterbacks in New York for the Heisman, but it could be argued that this young man is the best pro prospect of any quarterback in the collegiate scene today. Now, that's the passing, and there's going to be a lot of this going on. But for more on running in East Carolina, let's go to Dave Ryan. Byron? <laughs> Gate of two on that play. You know, every time we make fun of Dave's height, and we've done it a couple, I get a nasty phone call from his wife. Almost 5'9". Five, 5'9 nine. Five, nine and a half in shoes, and that pass was too tall. I Todd could have caught that. He's 6'3". You should have laid out, Dave, my head. and ruined that fancy suit you were wearing yesterday. Oh. <laughs> no one could have had that ball. Come on, where's, where's, the where's the hops? I, I, on. Di I dive for that one, but that's me. <laughs> Second down and eight. Byron was uh, very gracious with his time. Again, it only took us two takes. Normally we get it right the first time. 
Yeah, right. He only called Dave Shorty once. Here's Leftwich completing a beauty of a pass of Darius Watts. Truly now checks into the game. He's down to the 10-yard line. Leftwich doing what he couldn't do to Dave Ryan. Hits Watts in the numbers. 54-yard game. And remember, Watts is the one who struggled, remember, at the end of the first half when he dropped that slant route. This is a deep slant. What a gun. Boy, right between three defenders. Watts breaks a tackle and gets some yak down to the 10-yard line. Marshall has momentum on their side. First down and goal. Leftwich from the gun. Almost had some problems with that snap. And he takes off by the left side. Oh, my God. I'm telling you, uh, Steve, I, I, you know what, Dave Ryan must have woke him up. It must have been the thing with the miss. I'm telling you, one of the things here is Franklin Wallace leads out front. He's the one that knocks Stewart out of the way. But I tell you what, I was waiting for a delay of game. I mean, Leftwich is no speedster, but clearly the defense wasn't prepared for number seven to have a quarterback run on his own. This is a run all the way. There's no throw. Great job by Wallace out front. He's able to fall on top of the pylon. Steve, it appears we got ourselves a ball game. There's Curtis Head on for the extra point. And he blasts it through the upright. 12.23 to go in the third quarter. 14 points in just over two minutes for Marshall. And here come the thundering herd. back in this GMAC Bowl with East Carolina, joined live on the sideline by Thunder and Her head coach Bob Pruitt. We understand at halftime you weren't exactly pleased with your guys. What do you tell them to light the fire on them, Bob? Well, we just talked about making plays and adversity and, uh, and not giving up. Not, never quit trying, never uh, try quitting, and our guys are responding. I'm proud of them so far. Hope we can get back in it. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. All right, David, I think, I think they're already back in it at 38-22. A 30-point game at halftime, a 16-point game now. And another touchback, Marvin Towns in East Carolina will take over. First and 10 from their own 20. The start of the first half, very similar to the way the start of the second half, Tom. And eerily so. I mean, it really is. Look at that, only a 10-second difference. And, of course, you know what East Carolina did in the first half. Now, whether or not Marshall can follow up after those two, two quick scores remains to be seen. The onus clearly now is on the shoulders of Gerard in the Pirate offense. Again, first and 10 from their own 20. Gerard will hand it off to Leonard Henry, try to get him going. And he is going. Gain a nine on the play, good second effort there by Leonard Henry. Sixth in the nation in rushing, averaging 7.8 yards per carry. That's third best in the nation. Well, he's been outstanding, Steve. This is a young man who's averaged 130 yards per game. And the thing that I don't understand is I asked the coach, I said, is he small or is you don't want to give him extra carries? They said they don't. He averages less than 20 per game, which is amazing for a guy that's rushed for as many yards as he has. Henry again, the ball carrier, this time for five yards. He was the first East Carolina running back to go over 1,000 yards. We were well over 1,400-plus yards. But the last East Carolina back to rush for 1,000 yards in a season, Scott Harley in 96. 11 carries for 53 yards up to this point, Steve. And I'm thinking that this is the opportunity now. Hey, ride the back at number 22. Second down and five. We'll send Richard Alston in motion, top of your screen. And they will do this jack. Do this that. Give it to Henry. Ralph Street will stop after a gain of four. Steve, now that's three straight carries. Three straight carries and about 15 yards. That's what you have to do. And let's not forget at the top of the show something that we pointed out. The Marshall defense against the run now. 106th in the nation, giving up 218 yards per game. This is what Steve Logan, the offensive cognizant, said he had to do. Let's put the ball in the hands of number 22 and number 9. Every now and then on that option. Copper in motion this time as Gerard drops the pass. And he's throwing underneath and able to hook up with Derek Collier for a gain of eight. Collier's first catch of the afternoon. Tomorrow night, the 2001 bowl season continues. Pittsburgh certainly hopes to have Antonio Bryant in the lineup. As they take on Phillip Rivers and the Wolfpack of North Carolina State. The 2001 visit Florida Tangerine Bowl on ESPN. Sure is a fun trip in Orlando. Lots of things to see. Disney World.
Handoff. Henry breaking tackles. And he's down to the 42-yard line. Michael Owens made the stop on a gain of 12. Now, conversely, Kevin Kelly, the defensive coordinator for Marshall, now just has to jam people in the box. Just jam people in the box and say, okay, if you're out, you can beat me one-on-one -on -one up top, he beats me. But you can't afford to let them do what they're doing here, taking time off the clock, and Henry's taking chunks of the yard. Again, it's Henry. Slow developing draw played out of the 40. I guess it's kind of redundant, slow developing draw play, but a draw nonetheless, gain of one on the play. Alonzo Jones makes a nice tackle. I say a nice tackle because if he doesn't make the tackle, that, that uh, counter tray, which has been so popular ever since the days of the Redskins and the Hogs, would have had a first down. Second down and eight. Ball spotted at the 40. Under 10 to go here in the third quarter. We've got ourselves a ball game from Mobile. Here's Garan off play action. Rush rolls downfield sideline. Had Austin, and he couldn't pull it down. Had a little pressure, however. Jonathan, Jonathan Goddard was the man that was in his face, and he threw off the back foot and just couldn't quite get his feet planted to deliver the ball on the money. See right there, Austin goes up, but that's a little bit long for him. Still, if you're the quarterback, you're saying, boy, that would have been nice if you could have come up with that one. They're one for five on third down conversions tonight. This is third down in the tough nine. Garrard, good protection around him. Throwing down the middle of the field, Great it is throw. caught. Completed to Derek Collier, who has popped as he's dropped at the sixth gate of 33. Garrard on the money there. And Yancey Satterwhite is with him stride for stride, but Garrard makes a left which tight throw. Watch this as he sits in the pocket. Terrific coverage. Look at that. He puts it right on the money. Satterwhite is there. He just can't quite get it, despite the hard knock. Able to hold on. Huge play for the Pirates. And Alston, I believe, is the guy that's down. Excuse me, I'm wrong. It's like Terrence Copper is right. down. The sophomore from Washington, D.C. And he's limping. Copper was the one running the underneath route. I think he got whacked a little bit. And limping away quickly from the medical staff. Wants to get off the yep. field under his own power. Well, this is a huge drive for the Pirates because it seemed that the momentum had turned irrevocably to the side of the thundering herd. Give Gerard credit. Huge third down conversion. Double tight end set now. East Carolina. Gerard gives it to Henry. Does a little stutter step. Gain of three on the play. Kelvin Smith brought him down. And Steve, not only is this drive effective in terms of chunking, taking chunks of yardage, it takes some time off the clock. And you're saying, you're saying, what are you talking about? There's plenty of time left in the game. The issue here is in taking time off the clock, it makes the offense kind of get comfortable on the sidelines, sitting on their heels, watching the defense struggle a little bit. Psychologically, this is great for the Pirates. Second and goal from the five. Off play action. Corner of the end zone, and Barrard just threw that one away. Marty Ter Powell was in the neighborhood. Terrence Tarpley does a great job because everybody in the park is thinking, boy, we're running so effectively. But on second down, they try and surprise him with a play action fake. Number 21, Tarpley, absolutely is not fooled, and the result is that Barrard has to throw it away. Despite suffering a preseason knee injury, Tarpley required surgery. He's still able to start 11 of 12 games this season with a thundering herd. This is third down in the goal now. From the five. Option. You sure are correct. And Garrard will hang on to it. And three Marshall players swing him around, led by Chris Crocker, who's having himself a ball game. Steve, just as you talked about Jerome Stewart playing so well in the secondary for East Carolina, on the other side of the ledger is Chris Crocker, who continues to make good plays. Watch him come up and take on the tackle. Watch him take on Garrard. Forces him to the outside. He doesn't want to pitch now because they're too close. And Crocker says, nope, not here. You're going to have to attempt a field goal. And so Kevin Miller comes on. Already hit from 25. This will be from 22. Again, he's in his last eight in a row. And before the snap, the whistle blows. Steve Logan wants to know what's going on, and so do we. 
William Lemonnier. I've waited all day. I wanted to say that. And now you have. Okay. He'll tell us. Oh, you're reading lips. Oh, come on. <laughs> exactly. What is it? What is this, the Marley Matlin show? Come on. Let us know. Well, he came over and Steve Logan was screaming at him. I guess the assumption is that there was something once again wrong with the clock. So, taking about the 12 seconds scoreboard clock All off. Right. Now we're reset and ready to go. And Miller from 22. We'll try it again. Low snap. Whoa. And Miller is able to put it through. Kevin Miller connects East Carolina tonight in the red zone. They've been so good all season. They're a perfect 5-5 five five when they move on their lead. Carry 73 yards and a touchdown. And there is Leonard Henry. Came into action already. The Conference USA all-time record holder with 29 rushing touchdowns. And he remains in the football game today. This is the fourth straight drive for East Carolina that they'll start at their own 20-yard line. Seems to be this one. Henry is the ball carrier. A hop, skip, and a jump. He's tackled by Chris Crock. You know, we mentioned the Cincinnati game earlier when they had that 28-3 lead. The reason they had that is in the first quarter against Cincinnati. Henry had 168 yards and three touchdowns in one quarter. We call him Leonard Henry. Dave, what do they call him? Well, his nickname is Skinner, Steve. After the play, we'll tell you much more about that. Second down and six. Slot right. Handed off to Henry, trying the right side. A nice spinning run, and he's got enough for the first down. Tell us about it, Dave. So why is it Skinner? Well, turns out Leonard's dad, Charlie, was watching TV one night. Just before Leonard was born, he saw the rock and roll group Leonard Skinner playing. He told his wife, Teresa, Leonard would be a great name for our baby with a different spelling, of course. So the nickname back home is Skinner, and all the guys in the ECU campus call him Skinner as well. Not Skinnerd, but Skinner. He is second in rushing all time for East Carolina. Junior Smith is the record holder. Looks like Charlie Dempsey is injured. The left guard for East Carolina. The sophomore from Jacksonville, North Carolina. O-line has been doing an excellent job here, particularly on that last drive that took the momentum away from Marshall. Usually what happens at the end of the play is you catch it on the back. There you see him fall down and trip. Something he's holding his right knee. Right guard has been a problem for East Carolina this season. They've missed their starter at that position, Chris Nelson, for most of the season due to injury. And see if they lose their backup left guard here. Dempsey is Aaron Walker's backup. Having experienced that, I know how frustrating it is because, because what that doctor tells you is such a big deal. You saw him patting the leg. How loose is it? How loose is it? That's what you're thinking if you're the, if you're the man on the ground. I'll tell you about some great college basketball while we have the opportunity. Tomorrow night on ESPN2, see Rick Pitino. Louisville take on Tennessee. And then the nightcap, Memphis and Temple. John Chaney, John Calipari. Should be interesting tomorrow night. We're double dipping college hoops here on ESPN2. As Dempsey has helped off the field. Interesting with regards to that basketball, I'm curious your opinion. Patino going to Louisville. I mean, that, that's, that's odd. That's like a football coach who leaves Ohio State and goes to Michigan or something, or goes from Alabama to Auburn, right? I mean, that's quite a rival. That is, that is strange, and they're still not real happy about the job he did in Boston. No. And uh, Patino would actually admit to that. That's a really good job. As Henry has swung around and dropped at the 30 for a loss of one on the play. Josh Cordell making the stop. Good pursuit by the white shirts. The street stands his man up, and Cordell able to knife underneath and tackle Henry for the loss. We read about players like Cordell, the media guy. You know, they say all the great accomplishments in high school, but he had his uniform number retired in high school, and you don't come across wow. that too often. No, you don't. 
On second down and 11, send Leonard Henry in motion out to the right side. And it's picked off, and that's going to be six. Terrence Tarpley, touchdown, 25 yards, an ill-advised screen pass, and Tarpley gets the touchdown. Steve, this is thrown backwards. This is thrown backwards. The idea here is that he's going to throw the ball, but the block out front is not there. Take a look. He's supposed to be blocked, but it doesn't happen. I think it was Leonard Henry that was supposed to make the block. It doesn't happen. Tarpley steps in front of Alston, who is going to throw the ball downfield. Curtis Head is on to attempt the extra point. 5.21 to play here in the third. And this ball game just got a little tighter. Head will boot it through. Take another look at this play. The play is designed, it's a little bit of a gimmick. Now you can see right here, he's gonna throw it backward. See, he throws, he's behind, he's behind the line, but Henry could not block Tarpley. And the result is once again a momentum shift. Here's Gerard. There he's going to throw this backward. Alston's all set to go. Nope, he isn't. Tarpley, and as you point out, boy, is not, boy, that feels good if you're a corner. You get that pick six. These two teams, we told you, combined to average 70 points per game, right about where we are now. <laughs> 41. Hey! <laughs> but what we did not figure on is that the defenses have accounted for 28 of the 70 points tonight. Well, remember in the first quarter, I believe they had this, it was 21, 21 nothing at the end of the first quarter, 21 points, and now here it's 21 to three, essentially here in the third quarter. So it, it's really <laughs> and bizarre, isn't it? And the East Carolina Wolves, we, we documented how they've struggled in the turnover department, but it, it's really been the fumbles, not the interceptions for East Carolina that's been the Wolves. Steve Logan pointed that out at the luncheon. If we could just hang on to the football. No fumbles, kids, yesterday. That was his message to his team. Marvin Towns, again, no opportunity for a run back. And East Carolina will take over first and 10 from their own 20. You get the sense this one is, is far from over. We've still got a lot of points to be put up on that board by either the offense or the defense. Well, there's 20 minutes left in the game, and what has to happen here for East Carolina is the same thing that happened two drives ago. That 11, he just, he's shaking his head going, not again. Deja vu. And they say this coaching is fun. Whole games are fun. Logan is not about he's having a good time here so far tonight. Hand off to Henry. Gain of one on the play. Well, just as we talked about in the first quarter, how turnovers were such an issue for Marshall. Now they're huge on the other end. First, the interception by Ralph Street, a great athletic play and great anticipation. And, of course, on the other side here on this lateral, the pick by Tarpley, who steps in front and walks into the end zone. And once again, Marshall's got it going. Six turnovers in the football game today. If you just look at the offensive points, East Carolina is leading Marshall 23-15. But it's 41-29. You add it all up. And East Carolina looking for more, and Garrard took off, and Satterwhite brought him down after the gain of 21 by David Garrard. Injury update, down to Dave. That's the big gainer on the ground for Dave Garrard there, despite the fact starting left guard, Charlie Dempsey is lost for the game. They're saying a badly sprained left knee could be worse in terms of ligaments. They've got him iced up, and he's done for tonight. All right, Dave, thank you. Garrard, the third leading rusher on the team. And a 38-yard run earlier in the season. That one went for 21. It's time to let the running back take care of things. It's Leonard Henry, the ball carrier. Gain of five on the play. Garrard's best rushing game was against Syracuse. 13 carries for 54 yards. Steve, I'm wondering if at this point, if Doug Martin isn't looking down the playbook and saying, how many different ways can we run the option and how many different ways can we go off tackle? Garrard has only thrown the ball 13 times, and two of them have been for interceptions for touchdowns. So... I can't imagine that Gerard's going to be throwing too much more in this game. We we'll see the numbers on him on second down and five. Here's Henry knifing through the hole and out to the boy. Chris Crocker brought him down. Good explosion there, a speed by Henry, gain of 13. But again, and this is where East Carolina is strong, and that's in the running game, getting the ball between the tackles. And even though 
Steve Logan points out we're not a time of possession kind of team. I would think that the way things are going in the third quarter, they might want to turn into one. Get one of those running drives and take time off, off the clock like they did two drives ago. And they took off 347. Excuse me. Sorry, Todd Henry is over 103 yards today. Option. This time it's Austin had problems getting the football, and he doesn't have the football. Marshall has it. Larry Davis took it away from Austin. Now, for young players out there, here's my advice. If you're close to the sideline, and you feel like you can't come up with the ball as you see Steve Logan absolutely beleaguered. If you're this close to the sidelines and you can't come up with it, just bat the thing out of bounds right there. Just push it out of bounds. Instead, when you create a pop-up earlier in the season, remember, Stephen, we, we, those of you that watched probably a dolphin and jet game where the receiver got picked off and the guy went the other way because he bobbled it up in the air. Just push the thing out of bounds if you're not sure. First down and 10. Marshall looking to be opportunistic. Wallace the ball carrier. Gain of three on the play. Kevin Ward made the stop for East Carolina. Marshall has the football back because East Carolina has turned it over three times this quarter. And a quarter, this still has three minutes left in it to play. Steve, some huge pressure now on the East Carolina defense because you figure 38 to 8, this game is over with. If they score a touchdown now and come within 41 to 36, that is really going to be all sorts of problems on that bench for the Pirates. Marshall thought the MAC championship game was over with as well, and they had a 23-0 lead against Toledo, and that didn't work out. Incomplete pass. He tried to send it back to Franklin Wallace. This unique perspective of tonight's game. This unique perspective. That's not particularly unique. Now this is unique right there. This unique perspective of tonight's game being provided by the Saturn View. From high above the stadium, the Saturn Lightship team hopes you enjoy the 2001 GMAC Bowl and the View. Big third down here for East Carolina. As we pointed out, Marshall has struggled on third down throughout the game. But if, the, if they can... Once again, there is a clock issue as we're waiting to see that get reset. But the point here with regards to East Carolina is if they can force a three and out after yet another turnover, that would just be huge for them. Going to add some 23 seconds back onto the clock. So I wonder, who, who does this benefit, offense or defense, with all the stalling? What do you think? I think, Todd, I'm probably supposed to be asking you that particular question. Well, I'm just giving you a chance to analyze. Uh, I would think the stalling would help the offense here. So give me a chance then to change my voice and go, okay, third and eight. How's that? Try it. <laughs> Actually, the problem is you can do that. That's the problem if we give you a play-by-play -play opportunity. Probably better at it than I am. I'll be out of a job. Three for nine. That's what we talked about, the third down conversion. No, three struggle. for nine. <laughs> Didn't do it that way. There's Lefty. There's plenty of time. Throwing. Got a seed, and he's got his man. Danilo Marriott down at the 30-yard line. When they continue to rush with three and they're in their zone, where they're most vulnerable, Steve, is in the short corner area. Remember in the second quarter, he had a similar throw to Watts that he dropped near the sidelines. Here is the short corner by Marriott. He gets between the safeties and the linebackers underneath. And when you have this kind of time, oh, what a gun he has. And look at that spiral. Well, he throws a pretty ball. 23-yard gain on the play. 26 of 39 now for 319 yards. Is that good? And they give it to Watts with the speed, turned the corner. But he's tackled out of bounds. Cordell Griffin got a hand on him after the game of seven. Florida makes that play popular with their fun and gun. And, of course, Pruitt serves some time down there in the Sunshine State, so he's well aware of that. Watts is their fastest player, a 4-3-8 man is my understanding. Of course, I never believe 40 times anymore, but you can see number 40 is quite quick. And, of course, Tim Rose has to be a very concerned defensive coordinator. Second down and four from the 23. The so temperature is taking a pretty good dip. Game time temperature tonight was 63 degrees. They get the play away. That's pressure. Leftwich swung around and down. Vonta Leach on the sack. A loss of seven on the play. And that's why that's why you had Tim, Ro Tim Rose paying so much attention. He decided he wanted to come to blitz with the outside. Here he comes. 
comes in completely untouched. Poor job on the part of Wallace in searching out somebody coming in. When you have the back who's in, that's the guy that should be able to see it. In this case, Wallace could not, and the result is a sack now, third and 11. You find out how important that play really was after this play. Three receivers out to the right. Wallace standing side by side with Leftwood. Here's Byron to throw. Sets, fires, it's Marriott, first down and more. And he's dropped at the 15, gain of 15, and Leach brought him down. Leach is a linebacker at 5'11 and, and a little close to 250 pounds. There's no way that he should be covering Marriott coming across the middle like that. That is a complete mismatch. Great job by Leftwich to see it. First down for the Thundering Herd. Marriott, nine catches, 114 yards so far on the night. Here's Wallace. Touchdown! Franklin Wallace, 15 yards up the middle for the score. Steve, when you continue to fade back and pass, you spread people out, you're looking for receivers, you're looking for crossing routes, you're looking for all these things in the secondary, what happens? You go with the slip drop, poor tackling, in for six. Take a look at the middle of the field, you're gonna see the poor tackling. Right here, no, you gotta wrap people up. That's three different people who missed the tackle. The result is Wallace is in for the touchdown, and Steve, at this point, it's no longer hype. We do have a football game. <laughs> Here's Head on for the extra point, and it is good. 60 seconds left to play in the third quarter. We're in a five-point game. Dave, down to you. All right, Steve. Todd had said, what will happen on the East Carolina sideline? A few moments ago, Marshall marches down the field and scored what was once a 30-point lead. is down to five. As you can imagine, guys are hanging their heads here. What you're hearing mostly is, what in the world is going on? Didn't we have a big lead a few minutes ago? And some other words I really can't repeat to you guys on the air. Marshall has outscored East Carolina, Dave, 28 to three in this third quarter. Amazing when you think that Marshall was down 38-8 at halftime. And here we find ourselves in a five-point game with a minute left in the third quarter. When, to be honest, please. Ah, forget it. Oh, you're not going to be honest? No, now? So, as soon as somebody prefaces that right away, you know it's bogus. If you ever have people come to you and say, hey, can I ask you a question? Well, that's a question already. Meaning that what I was about to say was, I, I believe that this could happen, but not with a minute left in the third quarter. I was thinking that maybe, what about to say, three or four minutes left in the fourth quarter? Here's Head to kick it away. Towns won't get a chance again. Head boots it into the end zone every single time. Turnover's the story in the third quarter. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Speaking of, we have, we have a phrase in our house, Steve. It's called MOTO, M-O-T-O, Master of the Obvious. Yeah, turnovers have been the story, all right. Those two picks, and of course, the last one by Alston, who up to this point had a tremendous game, a number of good plays, just a pop-up, and of course, that turns into a touchdown. Now 41-36, the result of Wallace breaking three tackles, in for the score. With 55 seconds remaining, and evidently there's a penalty because they're going to have to kick it again. As they flag down, you look at the turnovers. Seven in the football game, so you can't call this a well-played game, but those folks with the GMAC ball here certainly been entertaining football game. Yes, <laughs> that, that goes without saying. Neither right. coach will like it. No, no, exactly right. We haven't seen too many smiles in the sidelines, either from Logan or Pruitt. Steve, Steve Logan saying to himself, yeah, 28 to 3, we understand the Cincinnati thing, we understand these others, but come on, 38 to 8? He knew what he was talking about when he said that to Dave Ryan, but of course, Dave always is able to elicit, to get those responses, isn't he? Not the coach speak, he gets the real thing. He's special like that, he is. Curtis Head will kick it again. We'll see if Marvin Towns has a chance to return this one. Head puts a leg in Wow, Towns looked like he was thinking about it. He didn't take his eye off the ball, but he'll be rescued by the touchback. Again, we've mentioned it. We've harped on it throughout, and it's, it's fact. Can't get around it. East Carolina, you look at the last four games, situations they've been in the first half, and dismantling some teams early, and then having to hang on or lose. 
I can't speak for the other four games, Steve, but I hear here in Mobile where they fancy, fancy themselves a bit of the junior New Orleans. Maybe it's bad mojo. Could be. Food for thought. Food for thought as well. Here's Garrard now. Throwing it across the middle and completing to Richard Alston. Makes a nice move for an extra yard to give him the first down. 38 seconds left in this third quarter. Gain of 11 on that play. That was a play that was effective. Remember, in the first quarter, they ran the same thing, the misdirection. Ralph Street took kind of a circuitous route to get to the quarterback, number 34. If he'd have just taken off and gone after Gerard, he might have had it. But instead, rounded it a little bit, and that afforded Gerard the chance to find Alston in the middle of the field. All six East Carolina second-half drives have started at their own 20-yard line. Hand off. Henry the left side. 804. Chris Crocker took him down. Eighth tackle of the game for Crocker of Marshall. Now everything, you know what's entertaining about this, Steve, is the time runs out here in the third quarter. Everything that we'd anticipated. Henry goes over 100 yards. Leftwich goes over 300 yards. We have over 70 points in scoring. And guess what? It's only the end of the third quarter. First three quarters have been rather entertaining. Can't wait to see what the fourth quarter has to offer. You have to wonder what's going through the mind of Steve Logan and Bob Pruitt. No idea how this one is going to shake out. Final 15 minutes are uh, coming up. College football lives here. You have asked for a better first half, Steve Logan, a complete domination of Marshall. Well, we've done this all year long, and what we got to do now is go play two more quarters of football, which we haven't done all year long. So we're going to have to finish this thing. Two defensive touchdowns, as big as it can get, but it's all about finishing now. This team is not finished, so that's going to be our focus in the second half, see if we can turn the heat up about two degrees. Good luck in the second half. The most recent flashback ever. Usually we flash back yesterday, a week ago, two weeks ago, two months ago. Not a quarter ago, as Leonard Henry is the ball carrier, but Steve Logan knows of what he speaks. And if you thought that was just coach speak, hey, try to keep his team focused and involved, absolutely not. It's exactly what we're talking about here in the second half. Of course, I'm sure that he hadn't predicted that his team was going to turn the ball over three times in the third quarter, two of them interceptions for touchdowns. But then again, he has experienced that. Todd, is that inexperience, the lack of the killer instinct? And we, we see that among our college football travels. Teams get up big and can't put other teams away. And I don't think you see it as much in the NFL. Well, I think what ends up happening is you have the inability to just step on the other guy's neck. And then what happens is when you have a big lead like that, you start to play not to lose as opposed to playing to win. And as those of you who watch a lot of sports know, there's a big difference between the two. And the measurement. Good for a first down. Thirteen oh seven left to play here in the fourth quarter. You are locked into the GMAC ball. Twenty fifth ranked Marshall found themselves trailing by thirty at halftime. And now they're trailing by five. You see the first downs. We just about flip flop the first half of the second half. Now here's East Carolina on the move, looking ahead of their five-point lead. Off play action, they pitch it back. So Richard Austin thought about throwing it. Bumps off some people, and he's down at the 28-yard line. Richard Austin can throw the football four times this season. He's attempted passes. Two of them have gone for touchdowns. Well, here's what happens here. Torrey Morris actually gets downfield, and he is open. But the play takes too long. And what happens is they're able to recover. Watch him come to the inside. Now he comes downfield. Look at this. Whoa, is he open. Throw it. Throw it. But it took too long. It just took too long, and as a result, he was just able to get a couple of yards and get out of bounds. And Austin as a thrower, two of four for 104 yards, 105 yards, and two scores. Here's Gerard throwing and completing to Derek Collier. And Collier's down to the 10-yard line. Collier really looking to find pay dirt. That's been a problem. He's tied for the team lead with 31 catches, but not a single touchdown catch this And let me season. tell you what was really important about this catch. He spins away. The guy comes out of nowhere to whack him from the backside. Bam! And you would have thought that at that point, number 55 would have separated the ball from him. 
That's Sam Goins, but he was able to hang on. That was a big play by him in holding on. First down and 10 from the 12. Garage take the option and kept it himself. Gain a two on the play. Max Yates brought him down. Yates, the big stopper on the Marshall defense, is relatively quiet so far today. I haven't mentioned his name too often. Ralph Street, it was interesting, decides to go for the back this time instead of going after Gerard. You can see he chases after the back, cuts to the inside, and Gerard does make the right decision in not pitching the ball and holding on. Yates in double figures in 11 of 12 games this season. Tackle 21 against Hackley. Here today, he has just five tackles so far. And 12 to go here in the fourth. Gerard under immediate pressure, able to break a tackle and leaps into the end zone. Now there is a flag down. There is a flag down. Oh, that's huge. He's going to come back holding against Gerard in the offense. Well, we know at 250 pounds, he can break tackles. Take a look at the middle of your screen. There's the holding right there on the ground. He's got him by the leg. That's the official sees, and so they'll go 10 yards back from that spot. Breaks the tackle of Alonzo Jones, and there you can see that's clear holding on the part of Demarcus Fox, who's holding Yancey Satterwhite. East Carolina, five for five in the red zone in this game. Here's Gerard. Going right, now feeling the pressure left. Still on his wow, feet, down strong. to the 15. Boy, oh boy, is he strong. I gotta tell you, it looked like Sam Dolan's had him, was just gonna drag him down, no problems, along with Orlando Washington. Take a look now. I know what his thinking is. Hey, everybody's coming to this side. Now, if I go back against the grain, I'm gonna pull it off. Orlando Washington says, no way, I'm dragging you down. Look how strong he is. I mean, that's a big man now. Washington's near 300 pounds, and he still can't pull him down. Loss of three on that play. Now here, you know what I like here, Steve? I like a drop play for this reason. Third down and 14, you're probably not gonna get the first down. Don't try and throw a pass and force something, and that's what he's doing. He's gonna call timeout and discuss it and say, look, I've got a great field goal kicker here. Let's go up by eight points. Let's not take any chances at all, because at this point, the only thing that's been killing us is turnovers. Let's go up by eight points. Let's be safe. Town on, uh, on Monday night. We certainly appreciate the fine hospitality of uh, the people here and the folks put together the GMAC ball. Pivotal play in the game on third and 14. After the timeout, here's Gerard. Throws it. It's on a slung it inside the 10, and it's incomplete. Collier couldn't hang on. Really, I don't understand that play, and they're fortunate to get that ball back because what he wanted is an out and up, and he was about to throw it up for grabs. He pulled it back, threw it downfield. I, I don't understand because Henry can get you five yards, then you've got a field goal inside the 30, a chip shot. Now, I'm not saying he's not going to make a 32-yarder. I'm just saying that that seems to me to make more sense. And, Todd, they burned a timeout to use that play. They have just one timeout left, and that figures to be pivotal in this game. Here's Kevin Miller. From 32 yards away, it is up, and it is good. Cue the cannon. And it becomes an eight-point game with 10.43 left here in the fourth. And again, East Carolina will have just one timeout left. Now, an issue that we haven't brought up earlier, but it has become a bit of an issue. You mentioned that it's gotten a little bit colder. Also, the wind has picked up a little bit because all the kicks that have gone in this direction, now Marshall is going to be going into the wind. That could affect some of Leftwich's throws. And so Marshall will face some more adversity, finding themselves down eight points in this game. This is a season that opened for the Thundering Herd. I and mean, you talk about tough scheduling at a conference. They lost their opener at then number one Florida, 49 to 14. Then spent the next six games dealing with a self-imposed suspension of 
12 starters sprinkled throughout those six games who allegedly received some extra benefits. And that's something Bob Pruitt has talked about, fighting through the adversity all season long. And they find themselves now here in the bowl game, the fifth straight bowl game, trailing by eight. And now how, how big does that two-point conversion by Trod Bugs loom? Yes. Because now Excellent they're point. one score away, as opposed to being down nine points. I am finding that recently the two-point conversion in both college and the NFL yep. seems to be more pivotal. Now, I don't know if we should pay more attention to it or we're in a, a string of two-point conversions. Here's Carey out to the 20-yard line. 18-yard return. We should compliment East Carolina, their cover teams. It seems to me, Steve, that, that, you know, they've scored 44 points, which means they kicked off a lot. And I don't recall Marshall ever starting outside the 20 as a result of a kickoff return. So astute, Todd, for East Carolina, they did allow a kick return to Zeke Parker of Louisville for 91 yards and a score. But the next longest after that all season, just 29 wow. yards. That's the kick coverage you are talking about. Today. Out of the gun, inside handoff to Franklin Wallace. And he'll pick up three on the play. Pernell Griffin on the stop. Tomorrow night, the 2001 bowl season continues. 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on ESPN. Phillip Rivers, the Wolf Pack, they'll meet up with the Pitt Panthers and potentially their superstar receiver, Antonio Bright, who's trying to get through an injury. That game in Orlando, the 2001 visit Florida Tangerine Bowl on ESPN. Nice shot with the USS Alabama in the back. That would be ball three of 20. As we count it down. Leftwich on his own. Gain a seven on the play. Now I wonder, Steve, you say to yourself, if you're at home and you're a Marshall fan, you say, why hasn't he done that before? Because if they rush with three and they've got eight in coverage, you're thinking to yourself, there got to be some holes for that quarterback to exploit. It just goes to show how much confidence Leftwich has in his arm and how disciplined he is. Because we've seen so many young quarterbacks. The first read's not there. I'm gone. i got to run. He hangs in there, sees read after read after read. This young man, after a horrible start, continues to impress me. Picked up the Vern Smith Award as the conference's MVP, only the third Marshall player to win it. Randy Moss and Chad Pennington. Tremendous former third players won it before. That pass by Leftwich behind his intended target, Darius Watts. And I think the East Carolina defense done a good job taking Watts pretty much out of this game. They really have. You know, coming into this game, he had those absolutely stunning stats. 91 catches for 1,417 yards, 18 touchdowns, 118 yards per game in yardage. He has not approached that. He is, I wouldn't say he's been a non-factor, but certainly he hasn't been as big a factor as you thought he was going to be. The 91 catches breaks, speaking of Randy Moss. Moss is Division I A school record been since Marshall came into Division 1A in 97. Second year of Bob Pruitt's staff. Here's Leftwich now. Throwing, put some air under it. Maybe too much. Watts couldn't bring that one down. Watts goes 6'2", 175, just a sophomore. And the hands on the hips by Leftwich speaks volumes. He had what he wanted, and you're exactly right. He gave it a little bit too much air. Third down and 10. It's one of those where the quarterback Pats himself in the chest and says, my bad. Marshall, 5 of 11 on third down. Again, 49% on the season. Fifth best team in the nation. Third down conversions. And the crowd starts to get loud. And here's Leftwich. Across the middle, completing first down yardage and more. And Leftwich is shaken up. Looked like he took a hit after the 17-yard gain to Josh Davis. Bernal Griffin looked like he put the hit on Leftwich. And I'm telling you what, boy, he takes a lot of hits. Watch at the end of the play. You're going to see it. Bernal Griffin drives him into the ground. And I'm telling you right now, Steve, at the NFL level, that's 15 yards. They call that. But look how tough he is. He hangs in, and you can see him grimacing. This would be a time to hand the ball off and let him recover. Good call, coach. Here's Wallace, the ball carrier. 
Out to about the 46 yard line, gain of six. Griffin, another tackle. And we've seen both quarterbacks show tremendous strength. These are not players who would appear to be injury prone. They take hits, keep on ticking. Well, this is one of the reasons why the pros love to have a big man like this, because they are going to take shots like that. If he's if that's your normal college quarterback, he got a break there because there was an injured player for East Carolina sprinting off the field. They blew it when Ronald Pooh was cup Powell rather. It's coming off the field, and of course, there's Troth warming up just in case. Second down and four. Excuse me, Stan Hill is the young man. And they hand it off to Wallace. Cut it back inside for a nice game. Game of five on the play. Griffin, another tackle, but not before it was too late. Now that's back to back handoffs, and you have to ask yourself the question. How badly is he hurting? We see him grimace. We see him lean over. Once he plants that, because he's holding his lower back, and you know how difficult that is, Steve, to plan and get the ball downfield. Ed Zondrecker, the offensive coordinator, told us about left, which holding on to the ball as the screen is out to Josh Davis. There is a flag on the play. But maybe that was an example. Zon Brecker said, Leftwich has the guts. He hangs on to the ball to the very last second. Try to wait for his receiver to get into the clear. And because of that, you're going to absorb some big hits, as he did. Substitution problem on the part of East Carolina. And once again, that'll give Leftwich some time to recover a little bit. I fractured my transverse process, Steve, and that's the bone that kind of covers your kidney down low. And it looks like it's around that area for left pitch. You see, right around his average, he averages, the offense averages throwing 350 yards a game. We'll take another shot at this, of course, Pernell Griffin. This is 254 pounds coming with speed, driving him into the ground right there, right through the gosh. Left switch off the best season for a quarterback in Mac history. We talked to him yesterday. I said, you know, I just wanted to try to goad him into an answer. He said, how is your season? He said, that could have been better. Not according to Mac statistics, it couldn't have been better. He had a brilliant season. Nice young man. Quick handoff to the receiver, Darius Watts. And Watts to the 31-yard line. Steve, gain of seven. Steve, I'm telling you right now. He's having a problem. He's really having a problem. He's bent over. You can see by his body language because if he's going to throw the ball, I would say if you're hurting that badly, you know he's going to come out of the gun because he doesn't want to take the five-step drops and he has problems with his lower back. So the more he's under the snap, the more you realize that it's either going to be a quick throw or he's going to hand the ball off. Here I'm guessing he's going to throw. First down and 10. Inside draw on the handoff out of the shotgun. No gain there. That's what I get for guessing. The wind really picking up. We can show you the American flag in the end zone. It's really blowing. There you go. That's John McDonough getting it done. And it's blowing well away. Marshall going against the wind. When is he going to throw? That's a big question. And how well is it? Gonna, what's it going to look like? And Todd, if you notice it, chances are the East Carolina so, coaching staff is well aware. Probably their players as well. They're coming with the blitz. Left switch drops. Wallace stays in to protect nicely. Flair comes late from the back charge. Canelo Marriott, the intended target. And there's an injured pirate down on the field. And it might be serious the way some of the Carolina players are, are pointing to get the medal of attention on the field and quickly. Is that Charlie Robinson? East Carolina might be the injured pirate on the field. There's the catch right at the end. Collides, his own tries teammate. to make the hit, and it actually comes from his own teammate. Comes from number 12, Anthony Adams. Take a look head to head. Right there at the end. Oh, it catches him right in the ear hole. He's actually going after the receiver. I, I don't know, frankly, I don't know where the flag came from. I mean, I know where the flag came from. I just don't know why. Todd Anthony Adams has been playing with a slight concussion involved in that collision with Charlie Robinson. Oh, good. He's getting up, but slowly. 
So time, you want to take your time. Yes, you do. And this is the point where they're saying, how many fingers and where are you? I've been there, Steve, where I actually had to reach down and touch the AstroTurf to realize where I was. I was that screwed up. But I'm glad he got up. Now back to the game for just a second. It didn't appear, judging by the velocity of that pass, that he had any problems. Yes. <laughs> Going back to Leftwich. Yeah. Seems like a long time ago we were talking about. It does. And I'm guessing that all this time off, you know, the time in between the sure. running plays and this, I think it's benefited. The it. offense. Really do. Benefiting the offense. Yep. On first down and 10. Pass to the three. <laughs> Left switch, straight drop with time. Cox and fires, and that is flat out drop. It was good coverage on the play at the five. Josh Davis had it, then could not hang on. Steve, this is what I preach to young receivers. And for those of you that are home that listen to the people say catch it in the hands, they're wrong. They're wrong. They're wrong. When you're between the hashes, you body this ball because you know you're going to get hit. Watch. He tries to make the nice hands catch, and all you have to do is get a piece of your arm to strip the ball away. If he goes up and cradles it in his chest with his arms and elbows, that's a catch. Travis Heath is the one to strip. Good advice from a guy who caught 90 balls in the NFL a couple of times. On second down and 10, according to our statistics, that's the eighth drop tonight by Marshall. Here's Leftwich rolling to his right and taking off. There is a flag down. Leftwich has taken on some people at the 15. Could have gone out of bounds, but elected to take the hit for the extra yardage and administer some punishment as well. A seven-yard gain, but we'll see what the flag's about. Well, it's holding, and it's all going to come back. And it's really not worth it. No. Holding offense. But this does tell you one other thing too, Steve, and that is, is that if he is hurting as badly as we thought he was, he certainly wouldn't have he certainly wouldn't have been running the ball that he would have thrown it out of the end zone. But instead he's feeling a little bit better. And once again, Heath is the one that comes up and takes a hit on him. Rolls out to the right. Not the niftiest guy in the world, but listen to the collision. Now, Despite the fact that Heath is the one that can deliver the lick, I think he took the run of it. Todd, I'm a little surprised more players don't have hand or wrist injuries. That looked like down low, helmet to the wrist area as well. And Leftwich shakes it off. And he's ready to throw again. Across the middle, and it is nearly intercepted. And quite frankly, should have been. Anthony Adams came across and could have had the pick. Tim Rose has been shaking it up here in the fourth quarter, not taking any more chances with the three rush and going back because Leftwich has been picking it apart. Now they've been coming with four, five, and six-man rushes to make him hurry his throws. Anthony Adams is waiting in the weeds. He reads his eyes the entire time, cuts across. You're absolutely right, Steve. That hit him right in the face mask. He should have had the pick. Now, Steve, this is another situation that we mentioned earlier. More than likely, they're not going to get to the 10-yard line, throw a hook pattern, get a little bit closer for a more makeable field goal. Just get the playoff. Here's Leftwich. Rowan's got a man wide open. It's Marriott. Touchdown! Canelo Marriott got behind the coverage. It's a 30-yard score. And Marshall continues to keep it close. It's a two-point game, and they're going. Two. Certainly they're going to go for two, but what I didn't understand there, Steve, is that defensively for Tim Rose and his Chargers, why would you blitz? They come with a blitz, and that means man-for-man -man coverage. Marriott has been running it out, running the short corner very well. He's able to, he's able to get Rodgers, cuts behind him, touchdown, and now they have an opportunity to tie the game with 6.15 remaining. When it was 38-8, East Carolina at halftime, you did not think about Marshall would be going for the tie. They've already got a two-point conversion tonight. This for the tie. As Leftwich brings him up, three receivers to his right, and he's going to attempt to pass for it. And it is batted away. Two-point conversion fails. You know what? That would have been worth the timeout. It was clear to me that Leftwich was still not quite right. He was still a little bit fatigued. That was a huge two points. It would have been worth it to call the timeout, regroup a little bit. Instead, the benefit goes to East Carolina, a precarious two-point lead.
back in Mobile, Alabama for the potential fantastic finish here. Well, of course, you know, th th this, this is storybook. The guy's been beat up. Third down, it's a huge play. He delivers on the money. But as I say, Steve, with that two-point conversion, that play was so large, and you know the guy's beat up. You know they're a little bit tired. Regroup. Sit there. Don't put all the pressure on your quarterback to make this absolutely one huge call. Visit with your offensive coordinator. Visit with your head coach. Make a decision on the sidelines. Plus, you get a chance to rest and think about it a little bit. And they did have all three timeouts absolutely. in their disposal, sure. which, of course, they still have now. Again, I keep talking about this young man at the next level, but the thing that's got to be impressive to professional scouts is they saw him at the beginning struggle. He could have easily just chucked it and said, I'm not, you know what, it's not my night, blah, blah, blah. We're 10 and 2. I still have big numbers instead. He regroups. He's been getting whacked around. He's been getting hit, but the young man continues to hang in there. This young man has a great future on Sunday. He's looking forward just to even next year. He's only going to lose one or two starters on offense. Short kick is bobbled momentarily, but then it's picked up. Ben Thomas with the good hands there. Let's go down to Dave Ryan. All right, Steven Todd, as you can imagine, this Marshall sideline has been exploding with the incredible comeback. At one point in this game, down by 30 points. It's been a roller coaster ride of emotions, to say the least, but their emotion now is totally on a high. Terrence Tarpley and Chris Crocker, two of the guys defensively trying to get the rest of their teammates going after a great comeback from this offense. They want the D to stand up tall here. East Carolina look to take some time off the clock. Garrard off the play action, rolling to his left. Now cuts it back to the right side, the near side, and here's Garrard. Out to the 40, and he's got the first down. Now remember, remember when he was inside the 20 going the other direction. That's exactly what he was thinking, which was he rolls all the way back and knows that he's got a cut back and a lot of yardage to the other side. This time, none of the defensive linemen could get their hands on him, and the result is a big game. Gain of 15 on the play there. And the clock stops, but it would have stopped anyway because it was for a first down. Gerard taking his time at the line of scrimmage. They get the play away. Fakes the option, keeps it himself. And he has dropped Satterwhite, another tackle for him after the gain of one. <laughs> The Saturn Lightship is providing us with these magnificent aerial views of the Lad People Stadium and downtown Mobile, Alabama tonight. Saturn is proud to provide its view as the official vehicle of the 2001 GMA Seaboard. On second and eight now. Rushing some people. Garrod hung in there to the last second oh. and couldn't get a play in it. Derek Collier, who gave you the effort, but couldn't bring it down. Garrard, we talked about Leftwich hanging in the last second. Garrard hung in there. Well, he did. Larry Davis came in and just whacked him, and I, I really thought that that was a catchable ball. You're right. He needed his, re he needed his receiver to bail him out. Are we going to see you coming up next? <laughs> Said NFL's greatest moments. I tell you what, people, I, I, I hope there are people at home who have been staying for this. They haven't been cheated. This has been a lot of fun the next day. Those who have walked out early wish there was a readmittance policy for Lad People Stadium. Third down and eight. Draw play. Great Successful. Call. Leonard Henry up the middle with the burst of speed as the coaching staff told us 0 to 60 in no time. Touchdown. There are no flags. 55 yard burst for Leonard Henry. Larry Davis is the one that almost knocked down Gerard before he got the ball off. This time, the young man is the one who unfortunately misses the tackle. They spread him out, do a great job with four wide receivers. Now as he comes up the middle, there's Davis. He cannot make the tackle. Everybody's got their back turned because they're in coverage. Satterwhite cannot catch Henry. He's off to the races. A huge score for the Pirates. This is more rushing touchdowns for Henry today, Todd, as Kevin Miller puts the extra point through. 25 carries, 165 yards, and two scores for Leonard Henry. Marshall has come back all night. Do they have another comeback left in them? We'll find out over the next five minutes.
This is the after the uh, touchdown by East Carolina. Wow, that wasn't very nice, Todd. And I, I think she hurt her hand. <laughs> Well, come on, then she deserves to get her hands hurt. She's not doing much of the work. The other guy is. Speaking of working, are you back up, baby. An effort today? Be back up, baby. Leonard Henry, Be back up. Caroline go. Skinner. And the kickoff bounces out of the end zone. Marshall will take over. Down by the always elusive nine. Yep. With 4.55 to play here in the fourth. Marshall does have all three timeouts left. So far tonight, we've seen 921 yards of total offense. We told you these two schools average a combined 70 points per game. We're at 93 and counting. Yeah, Steve, uh, we were, Ben and I were talking about that before the game. He says, I think the over and under on this is 60. I said, hope you took over. <laughs> Man. Well, much more coverage, post-game reaction. Todd's fine analysis over on ESPN News. As soon as this one is over, that pass left, which was behind his intended target, the running back Franklin Wallace. Now is the situation where he, where left, which needs to revert to what he was doing in the third quarter. Carolina has a two-score lead, so I'm almost certain that most of the time they're going to rush three and cover with eight. They just don't want to give up a big play at this point. <laughs> On second and ten, three receivers to his right. Continue to rush three, Todd. His left which throws and completes the pass underneath. Able to get it to Curtis Jones, who wanted to spin away from the tackle, but could not gain a lead on the play. And, of course, what's costly about that is not getting the first down the clock. Third and short. They run it with the quarterback Leftwich up the middle, and there the clock stops on the first down. Leftwich picks up four on the play. And one of the advantages is the receivers didn't have to move, so there'll be very little time go off the clock here as Leftwich makes the call. First down and ten for Leftwich. Throwing sideline and completing to Curtis Jones. Gain of 16, and there is a flag down. Looks like it could be a personal foul. Well, that was, I'll tell you what, that was awfully late for a hold. Very late. Marshall, the first MAC team to average more than 500 yards offense per game. And they're not at 500 yet tonight. One, one thing that impresses me as we get this shot from the blimp is Leftwich. I like his demeanor, and I think I think that's one of the things the coach has great respect for him is with regards to his demeanor. Not too high, not too low. That's great to have that in the quarterback. This is what it looks like from the blimp, and probably even a little smaller from from the moon. So as Leftwich will throw, you get the area look from the really cheap seats. Able to complete. Can you see there from that point? It was 82. Josh Davis, 17-yard gain on the play. Well, again, the great time that he gets, he sits there and essentially throws the same route. It's the out route. It's, instead of Jones this time, it was Davis. Josh Davis, first team All-Mac. <laughs> there it is again. Every Marshall player, or just about him. 31 of 49, the numbers on Leftwich. 406 yards pass. Looking for more. That in and out of the hands of Darius Watts. Leftwich has been off. He's been high tonight. Well, once, let's give credit to East Carolina. They came with five that time, decided that they wanted to blitz to shake him up a little bit. And when he saw the blitz, he hurried his throw a little bit, and that's why it was a ride. More great college football for you. Division one and Division one double A. Check out the championship game on Friday on ESPN. Left with throws. And completes. Hits De Niro Marriott. Gain of five on the play. Kevin Ward made the stop. 
Good tackle by Ward because it appeared that Marriott was going to be able to spin out and get some extra yard, yardage and maybe get out of bounds, but Ward drops him in his tracks, and as a result, the clock will start again, even though they get the first down. Three receivers to the right of left this down. Trailing by nine. All three timeouts left. Come with the blitz. Pressure up the middle. Right by left, which he's able to stand up and throw and should have been complete, but that'll go as a drop. Marriott could not hang on. That would have been good enough for first down yardage, I think. It's got to feel really good when you're a receiver and you can run around and know that the first guy more than likely is going to miss your quarterback. I mean, he comes right up the middle completely untouched. Take a look. Here's Griffin. Got him dead to rights. Now, I don't think so. You go by me. I tell you what, boy, I, I just am really impressed, besides the arm of Leftwich with, with his poise, and boy, has he been betrayed. I'm thinking, Steve, he's got to be well over 500 yards, according to what we have, the ninth drop of the game. Here's Leftwich. And he went down. Let's see if they call him down. And they do. Cornell Griffin, the sack, as Leftwich tried to get it away. Loss of 10. And Leftwich will shake that one off as well. And it's we'll almost too. And I was going to say, same spot, he's hurt again, but it's almost the identical play. Remember that Griffin came in and pile drived him into the ground. Take a look. He's able to fight through. Now, right here, he's got him. Drives him into the ground right on that same side, the exact same place. Getting a good look at Griffin. 13 tackles, one and a half sacks. I told you he's in the top five in the nation in total tackles. Conference USA's all time leader in tackles. And he has the school record at 24 tackles this season in the opener against Wake Forest. Well, what's he done other than that? Yeah, nothing. Double-digit tackles, Todd, in 21 of his 41 career starts. Pernell Griffin. And he doesn't just tackle. He's not just arm tackling people either. And as you saw, just asked Byron Leftwich, he's putting a hurting on some people. College basketball would like to be, in some cases, as high scoring as this football game. <laughs> Tennessee and Louisville, will they get? Will they get there? Probably. 7 Eastern on ESPN2 tomorrow night. That'll be followed up by Memphis and Temple. You get a look at the diaper dandy, Dewan Wagner. John Cheney goes up against John Calipari. College basketball tomorrow night, right here on ESPN2. You know, as you mentioned that, I think it was the other, what, two nights ago? The Utah Jazz in the uh, Miami Heat last night. Heat? Was it last night? 56 points. 56 points. He <laughs> just mentioned those points. I thought, wow, that's pro basketball. I would have liked to have heard Pat Riley's uh, post game press conference. Hey, that was in Miami. Yeah, right. right. They're not used to tough times when they got that brand spanking new arena down in Miami, too. Well, third and 19, you're saying to yourself, well, boy, you know, no big deal. But remember, he had a, he had a life situation. We threw the touchdown to Marriott. Carolina bringing some people. Leftwich hangs in there and throws. Timing route is caught. Watts has the first down and was looking for extra yardage. It's forced out. Gain of 23. I, I, don't under, I, I don't understand the thinking. Again, you're ahead by nine points. And maybe that's what it is. But why would you blitz in that situation? Third and 19. Rush three. Put eight guys back. Let them complete a ball for eight yards. Make a tackle and force a fourth down. Instead, they go man coverage. And once again, Leftwich continues to burn them when they go man. Making third and 19 look rather easy. Gain a 23 on the play. Cross midfield from the 42 of the Pirates. Left which you get all sorts of time. Has a man wide open. And make that drop number 10. Josh Davis. The guilty party. To his credit, though, the young man number seven, I have yet to see him, and I've been watching closely, I have yet to see him scream at somebody and tell him to hang on to the ball. And if ever there was a night where you could have done it, this is the night. A huge game, a championship game by their standards, a bowl game, rings, watches, whatever is on the line, and yet this young man has refused to blame anybody. And that will also tell the NFL folks watching another positive yep. about Byron Leftwich. We asked him about feeling the pressure. He goes, nah. Pressure breaks pipes, he said, not people. You know what? That's a good... You know what? I was just thinking about that. <laughs> I was looking down at my notes, right? And it's not 10. It's 11 drop. We have to count Dave Ryan's. We're not going to flash back and show the uh, Dave Ryan drop. Or, no. Ryan should have hung out, we thought, yesterday. 
So one drop yesterday, 10 here tonight. GMAC vote. 10 drops, not a laughing matter for the votes of Marshall. Here's Leftwich now. It's again. Oh. Takes the big hit, hung in there for the last second, and able to complete to the narrow Marriott. And I think that they're going to call, they're going to tack on 15, I'm guessing, here. That's got to be a roughing the passer. Kevin Ward is the one that came on the delayed blitz, and he hit him right. Boy, he whacked it. Gets up slowly again after completing for 22 yards. And folks, you wonder, you see how Leftwich looks a little bit fat. Well, he's not fat, you know that. Those are rib pads. And the reason you have to have those rib pads is because of the hits like this that you've got to take as the quarterback. Here comes Ward down the middle. There's the throw. Hits him right in the mouth. Good call by the official. And he hangs in there and delivers the ball on the money. Unbelievable. And I, Steve Logan, I, you know what? You need to get on the sidelines because that's exactly what it, Maybe he didn't see him hit him in the mouth, but the timing of it was okay, but you can't go to his head. I think when Coach Logan sees the replay, he will agree. Yep. Under three to go. Clock is moving. And so too is Marshall. First and goal from the nine now after the penalty. Here's Leftwich. He guns it in there and maybe too hard. Want to make that number 11? I'd say so. Off the hands of Josh Davis. I'd say so. And Leftwich continues to go back to the people who make the drops. Watts, Marriott, and Davis. Well, but that, who else are you going to throw to? Yeah. yeah, it's everybody. The only benefit there is it stops the clock. Leftwich's numbers, 34 of 56. But factor in 11 drops, his completion percentage is much better. Tries to take off up in the middle himself, and he's taken down of the 11. Domaine Duckett made the stop. The idea was correct. The idea is correct because he's got everybody spread out. He's got the five wide receivers. He can get in there. If he gets past Duckett, it is a touchdown. He's not quite as nimble as Gerard. And the result is he's able to make the tackle. Third down and goal. They have two timeouts remaining. Take a look at the middle. If he gets past this one guy, look at that. It's a touchdown. But instead, he can't duck it with a big play. Here's Leftwich, all sorts of time. Here in the end zone, and his receiver slipped down. Curtis Jones. And Todd, you need two scores. Is there any question here? Well, with two time, they have two timeouts remaining. And so, th no, they're going to kick a field goal. You're absolutely right. Good call. Got to have the two scores anyway. Take a look right here. Take a look at the back. Take a look right here. He throws this on time. Take a look at the two. He really wants it. Look at the back right here. Nobody here. Nobody here. That would have been easy first down. That's easy for me to second guess up here. Curtis Head, his first field goal attempt of the game will be from 27. He's missed just once this season. That was from 32. And Head connects. A minute. 53 to play. Now, the question that I was saying when I mentioned the two timeouts is if they had enough time to stop them defensively. But obviously, they've given up 51 points. They're not going to stop them defensively. So I think it's a no-brainer here. But coming back after this break, we are going to have an onside kick. to 45 with 153 remaining in the fourth quarter and of course if indeed they had been stifling on defense maybe you can consider the idea of going with kicking off deep and holding them and calling your timeouts but I don't think so I think that right here you have to have your hands people there are 10 people up and they are going to line up and of course they set the thing right away the tee leaning in that direction now I guess the question here Steve would be are you going to get the pop-up are they going to go with the uh, the one bounce and they have their they have their hands people out there people like Alston and Henry all their good players so here it comes Curtis head likely with the ball game of the balance ground ball and there's the flag it was recovered by John Williamson of East Carolina the linebacker and it did not appear to go 10 yards well it doesn't matter they're going to recover that and that that was a, that was a poor onside kick and i say that not to be critical but simply the fact that as a kicker you get to practice it over and over and over again and it comes right down the middle to number 30 
Now, East Carolina will have the opportunity, assuming they don't turn the ball over, to run out the clock. Coming up next, this game has gone so long. Forget about the NFL's greatest moments. We've moved <laughs> on to NBA tonight. <laughs> Jason Jackson and Fred Carter are standing by. <laughs> Todd, you would have been on that. Todd. Maybe you'll be on the NBA tonight. Well, I was waiting for you to say it was late night sermonette. <laughs> That's what was coming up next. Or, no gain on the handoff and the clock moving. Or the test patterns. <laughs> now, after second and third down is when I guess they're going to use their timeouts. I'm surprised they didn't get here. Yeah, yeah. But you know, in a strange game like this, Steve, you can't just assume what's going to happen. You might as well use it because you never know. I mean, if ever there was a game that was planned for another miracle, the Meadowlands, this would be it. 38 to 8. Who knew, right? Got the play clock down to six to get it off. And perfect. To snap it with two. Handoff. Right side. It's Henry grinding it out. And now they'll take a timeout. A minute four left. Timeout for Marshall. They'll have one more. Steve, we talked about how they wanted to ride Henry's back. I mentioned that the most carries that he had had all year was 26. Now he's over that. That's the most he's had all year in this game. We'll step out. 64 ticks remain. Six point game. BC. College football lives here. Ranked teams have gone down to defeat in the first two bowl games here in Mobile. We'll see if it's third time. The 25th ranked Marshall trailing by six. Yates will make the stop on Garrard, and Marshall will be charged their final timeout with 57 seconds remaining on the clock. And it'll be a fourth down situation when we come back to Mobile. State Farm Friday on ESPN. Back in Mobile, it's fourth down and eight. Jared Preston is on the punt. At least he appeared he was on the punt. Now they're just going to huddle on the field. Well, he, he, the huddle is very simple, and that is protect the punter. You know, I, I mean, if he just hammers it to the end zone, that's fine. You know, don't try and angle it out. Don't try and be cute. You just don't want to give them an opportunity to get a chance at a block punt. So if, even though Preston might not like it, the idea here is, look, take two steps, just get the thing off, don't worry about it. And if for whatever reason they can drive 80 yards, big deal. NBA Tonight is coming up next. Jay Jackson, Mad Dog, they're standing by, and we will see you over on ESPN News for post-game coverage of this one. Josh Davis is back at his 10. Jared Preston is set to putt. And Marshall's going to bring everybody but Davis. A bit of a high snap. Preston does a nice job to get it out of there and bang it out of the end zone. Exactly. It's the best play of the game right there. 50 seconds left. Marshall will take over. First and 10 from their 20 with no timeouts remaining. But again, first down stops the clock. And, and the game isn't over, just as you pointed out, Steve, because of that collegiate rule, the first downs, and the way they're used to hustling up and the short corners that have been so effective, but the one thing that can't happen for Leftwich here is, is people can't be dropping the balls. Up to this point, Steve, 34 for 57, 455 yards, but 11 drops. Three receivers to his right. And here's Byron Leftwich. Good protection, throwing, and can't connect with an arrow Marriott. That's what we've been talking about, Steve. The short corner is there. Come back and do it again. 44 seconds left on the clock. Now it brings up the question with regards to Tim Rose here is whether or not he's going to blitz or he's going to stay with his three-man rush. If I'm him, I stay with the three-man rush and make this guy beat me with a long pass. Marshall, the number three passing offense, the total offense team in the nation. And they need some of that offense, and they need it now. No timeouts remaining. Second and ten from the road 20. Here's left one. Carolina rushing three, and that's why Leftwich has time for lunch. And he just airs it out down the sideline. No white jersey even close to it. 36 seconds left. And it'll bring up a third down and 10. 
now, even though he doesn't like it, he might, he might have to think about throwing the ball over the middle of the field to get the first down. Obviously, you want to throw to the side because you can get guys out of bounds and stop the clock. But he doesn't want to put himself in a situation of fourth and ten. He really needs the first here, and then he can sprint up and spike the ball. Again, this is just ball number two out of 25. <laughs> it's a great time of year in college for sure is. On third and ten now. Leftwich will throw. He's got the man and he's got the first down. Goes back to Marriott, other side of the field. Gain of 19. Clock stop with 30 seconds left. Steve, ultimately with 30 seconds remaining, one of the things right now that, that Leftwich may be looking back at is that first short corner that they didn't get because time now is an issue with 30 seconds as opposed to 50 and 60 yards to go. Trailing by six. Field goal won't help him now. Leftwich has a seam across the middle and able to complete Curtis Jones. Now they've got to sprint up and spike it. They've got to sprint up and spike it as soon as he gets it. And they'll have about 23 or 22 seconds remaining on the clock. It's a gain of 26. Still at 24 on the clock. And I think just a second comes off the clock. They never got to wind it. And they spike the ball. But that heads up on the part of left, which to do that. Absolutely. Now he can get he can get together, get it from the sidelines. In East Carolina, Tim Rose, boy, oh boy. He knows that they've got to be intense. They gotta hang in there. Can't take it for granted. Leftwich, 501 yards passing tonight. 23 ticks remain. This is second and ten at the 33 of East Carolina. Leftwich throwing and completing it's Marriott down to the 10. Unbelievable. 16 seconds left. Unbelievable. Trying to rally the teams. Gain of 19 on the play. They huddle together and once again only a second or two is going to bleed off from it. And that time, not even a second went off the clock. It was stuck on 16, and that's where it is right now. Now, Steve, depending upon how they do this here at the end, I'm, we're looking at possibly, possibly three plays. Possibly three plays. And Tim Rose might want to be thinking here, he's run out of real estate. Somebody's got to get left with his face. East Carolina has the timeout. Does that benefit the defense here in any way? In terms of personnel, getting a breather for some of your better defensive players. You maybe. think about that, but the problem is, Steve, is that if you do that, that gives Leftwich time to recover and go over and visit about a number of plays. You want to put pressure on the young man. But what, what but then again, I'm saying to myself, they've been put, they've been doing everything. We need the clock. My apologies. We'll put the clock at 16 seconds. 16 seconds, a very polite referee. And you hear the crowd booing, but I'm telling you, Steve, this is a big deal. Every second seems to be something here in this game. Six-point game. 16 seconds left. Leftwich, first and goal for the 10. Quick corner to the end zone. It is... He got it! Darius Watts went up for the touchdown. He caught it! And it's a tie game! With seven seconds left, we are tied at 51. Steve, he threw that before he looked. He threw it before he was even in the end zone. What a timing throw by Leftwich. I can't believe what I just saw. And for all the drops, 11 of them tonight for Marshall. Darius Watts hangs on to the most important one. His second touchdown of the game. Here is the extra point from Curtis Head. To put Marshall in front, he missed it. Oh, he missed it. What else can happen? Oh, man. Curtis Head, 51 of 57 on extra points during the regular season, just too shy of a mad record, and he missed it. Now, Steve, isn't that bizarre? I was just about to point out that he'd only missed one field goal, he missed six extra points. What a throw by Leftwich! Snap! One step. 
throw it up. Look at that. Watts doesn't even come close to looking. Throws it over the top. Watts comes over the top. This is poor coverage. Poor coverage by the defender. But boy, what a great throw. And Leftwich has every reason to be excited. Kelly Hardy is the defensive back. And here's the reaction of the coaches. Yeah, the touchdown's great. But take a look at the reaction now. The extra point. Just awful. He just pushed it right. He missed it. Oh, man. What a game. <laughs> <laughs> Seven seconds left. Seven seconds left in regulation time. Well, the ball is gone right there. The ball is gone. And you can see Hardy does not get around in time. What a great catch. Gets both feet down. After all the struggles that the receivers have had, Steve, you called it. What a great catch in getting his feet down for the score. Marshall has come all the way back. And now it's really on Marshall. They are an extra point away from winning the game. Head can't connect. And we are staring overtime in the face. Head will kick the ground ball on the kickoff. And East Carolina will just go down to the turf with, let's see, four seconds left. And again, we are a play away, likely, from overtime. And you look at the overtime rules. Overtime is, overtime is outstanding in college football. We can shut off the game clock. I like the teams must go for two-point conversions starting with a third OT. Now think about this, Steve. <laughs> 51 to 51. Yeah. If we get a situation like the game, what was it, Mississippi and Arkansas? Seven overtimes. Seven overtimes. Then the final score would be, it would be 49 and 49. It would be 100 to 100. <laughs> I'm not sure the scoreboard is built for that. Wow. Triple digits on the east side. Wow. Hey, folks, welcome back. Those of you who are watching at halftime when it was a 30-point game, you're the this, overtime guy in hockey. Now you're the overtime guy in football. I can't believe it. This is not the replay. Overtime is next. We're having so much fun here in Mobile, Alabama. <laughs> we decided to stick around a little longer. The GMAC ball is going OT. We can turn off the school board clock, the play clock, the only thing that will count now. And we will have the coin toss upcoming for you. The coin toss, you know, you say it's not so pivotal because each team gets at least one crack with the football. Even in the NFL, it doesn't appear to be that pivotal. When you lose the toss, it's about 50-50 in terms of winning the football game. But, of course, you do want to go on defense. You know, you want to put the pressure on the other guy, maybe kick the field goal or even, you know, get a turnover. That's what you want to do, given the circumstances. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you like here? Head your tails, John. They send you out by yourself? You know what? Oh, Gentlemen, this is so much fun. Yeah. I, realize that, I realize that the coaches don't feel that way because this is bizarre. But, boy, they just have a good team tonight. Eagles, Tails. Seven, give me your call. Tails. Tails is the call. Let's come up heads. East Carolina, your options are to go on offense, defense, or which end of the field? Defense. You choose defense. Which end will we play? Now, see, the thought process there, I thought it was interesting. If we win the toss, go defense. But he didn't give them anything to say about when they lost the toss. Right. right? The score by quarters. You want to talk about a wild scoring scenario. Marshall outscoring East Carolina 43-13 in the second half. That's if they were blown out in the first half, trailing by 30 at the break. Now, that was a wild sequence for Marshall. When you think about it, some 80 yards and 43 seconds, no timeouts. They get an unbelievable touchdown play and then missed the extra point, which would have won it. It's an interesting psychology heading into the overtime for that very reason. I'm glad you pointed that out. You're saying to yourself, who has the advantage? Well, in theory, you would think offensively because of the way they rush down the field that Marshall would. But I have to think that they have to be a little bit deflated with that missed extra point. And so I'm going to go out on a limb here just a little bit and say that I think East Carolina has just a slight advantage here in the overtime. Yeah, I and mean, the East Carolina psyche, right? They had a figure when the when Head comes out on the field for the extra point. Right. They had a figure. Yeah. We've blown it. One of the great collapses in recent college football memory 
And here they are, given a second life. Or third or fourth or fifth. And Steve Logan was absolutely implacable. I don't know if you're paying close attention at home, but I thought it was interesting that when the guy scored the touchdown, you saw his face, and when the extra point was missed, no change of expression. All right, here we go. One of the great systems in all the sports, college football overtime. Each team gets at least one crack from the opponent's 25. Scoreboard clock might as well turn it off. And a drop. Interesting the way they would start the overtime. Josh Davis could not hang on. We'll call that number 12. 12 drop passes on left which tonight. Todd, what's an acceptable number? Offensive coordinator, quarterback. In terms of drops, you have to expect mistakes, especially at the college football lever level. I mean, obviously, it's not 12, but it's three or four, except no, considerably less than half a dozen. That's why I was going to say more like three or four. But boy, it, and think about you just saw that he had a career high 536 yards. How many yards would he have without the drops? Second down and 10 now. Gus Rich will step up under center. And that pass is blocked and nearly intercepted. Chris Howell, the nose guard, went up to bat that one down. And this will bring up a third down and 10. But again, this is what we were talking about. There is a little bit of renewed life there for the Pirates. And you can't help but think that after all the shots that left, which has taken, of course, I keep saying that, and he keeps coming back. I mean, he's like, you know, he's, he's the veritable Phoenix as a quarterback. He keeps getting up and rising from the ashes and making plays. The junior has said he's coming back next season. No matter what, he said this time of year, next year, I worry about the NFL. Here's third down and 10. McGlitzen. Leftwich across the middle, it is caught to Darius Watts. Gain of 12 on the play. I just don't understand why you want to blitz that guy. The guy is just killing you with man for man coverage. Here they come with a blitz, they come with five, stands in, man coverage. Watts is too much for the corner. He takes a shot, but it's a first down for the thundering herd. Just set it down. We'll try the running game, inside handoff to Franklin Wallace. And he's down to the five. Howell brought him down after the gain of six. Uh, obviously, Leftwich has been very effective, but I'm surprised, Franklin, that Wallace hasn't been used a little bit more. The NBA tonight is coming up, and unless we go much longer into the night, and then we'll move on to the next program. <laughs> We've already blown off one show. Let's see, we can go for two. Second down and three. Handoff again, it's Wallace. And he bangs down close to the goal line, down about the two yard line now. Well, he's going to get the first down. One of the things that's important for East Carolina on the sidelines now is their offensive people have to be on their toes and get themselves ready. They can't afford to be spectators and just watching what's going on in the field because they're going to be on in a little bit and they can't afford to be flat. Marcus Hairston. Checks into the game. Well, that's a second tight end, Steve. Obviously, they're in the running set. This is first down and goal from the two. Wallace in. Touchdown. Put six on the board. Marshall strikes first in overtime. Steve, one thing that I've noticed here, and, and I'm sure you noticed the same thing. Remember, we were talking about how Marshall had been struggling on third downs in the fourth quarter. I don't know what the conversion rate was, but it must be amazing. And that conversion on the third and ten was absolutely huge. That's what predicated the score by Wallace. Todd Curtis' head comes on to try the extra point. Likely could have ended this one earlier. And he just gets that one through. I don't know if it was partially tipped or not. Just got that extra point through. And in fact, it was just tipped. And so that makes it a 58-51 game in East Carolina. Look at their crack. Nice vertical on the part of Wallace. But then again, good blocking at the point of attack as well. Steve, what I had mentioned about the third down conversions. Remember at one point, they were three of nine. They were three of nine on their third down conversions. Since that time, they've been nine out of 10 on third down. And don't forget, a couple of those are like third 19, third and 16. So here now, East Carolina. Marshall picking a pretty good time to take their first lead of the game in overtime. Here's Garrard handing it off. Leonard Henry, down the five, <laughs> touchdown. No problem at all. This is 25 <laughs> yards. For Leonard Henry and Marshall offense, better get ready to get back on the field. Well, I, I, I tell you what, 
We talked about how the offense needed to be on top of their toes. The defense for Marshall clearly wasn't. Remember, this is the same play, Steve, where he had the long touchdown run. It appears that it's going to be the option. Instead, he hands to Henry underneath, just walks through and goes in completely untouched. Let's not lose sight of this extra point. Yep. Kevin Miller misses. This ball game's over. 38 of 40 extra points during the regular season. And Miller is true. And we are headed for double overtime. This has Penguins Flyers written all over it. <laughs> double overtime when we come back to GMAC ball. Getting ready for their overtime, Mobile, Alabama. An incredible game between East Carolina and Marshall. Live with Coach Bob Pruitt. You said at halftime to your guys, do not give up on me. Did you ever think you'd come all the way back and force two OTs here? Well, you know, you never say never, and we're excited about it. It's a shame one of these teams are going to end up not, not winning. I just hope it's not us. What are you telling your offense right now? We just got to score and keep them from scoring. Good luck. Thanks. You know what? I... I, I... Could you go back with me on that? That was a little complex what he just said. <laughs> a little too intricate. Now, did he say we got to score? <laughs> Are you going to mess with a head coach's okay, no, team no, no. who just outscored East Carolina 43-13 in the second half alone? Now, I thought it was interesting in the course of Car no, See, that's a different man than the one that just talked to Dave Ryan. He went over and had a different thing to say. However, having said that, I thought it was interesting, classy on the part of Coach Pruitt to not even bring up the missed extra point. That was, that was a result of the flip. You're asking yourself, what's the deal? Well, they go back on offense as a result of winning the flip. Down at the same end of the field. Handoff to Leonard Henry. Not much doing that time. They'll give him one on the forward progress. We're going to bring up a second down and nine. We are in the second overtime. The GMAC Bowl. We might be on ESPN Classic sooner than you think. <laughs> this has been a wild game. More than, more than 1,100 yards and 116 points. Wow. We thought we were kidding when we promised to a lot of offense tonight. That's the defensive touchdowns well for them tonight. Here's Garrard. Rolling to his right under some pressure from the backside. And he will throw incomplete to Tory Morris. He's down at the 20-yard line. They'll give him four on the play. That'll bring up third down. Gerard does a nice job of feeling from the backside. It appeared that just for a second there he was going to get sacked, but he continues to roll to his right and buys time until Torrey can get open and get him the ball. I'm sorry, I called him by his first name. My son's name is Torrey. I just wanted to understand him. Yep. Okay. NBA tonight is coming up next still. When next is, we can't be sure. But we're told it's coming up next. Third down and five now. Gerard, the straight drop. Now rolling to his right. Directing traffic, and he'll cut it back to the left. He needs to get rid of it, Steve. And he gets rid of it, and Morley get rid of it, and nearly caught for a touchdown. And there is a flag down. Looked like it went off Henry's hands. Roberto Terrell was out there in the coverage, and he might have gotten the piece and knocked it away. The reason I was saying he needed to get away from it, throw it, Steve, was because it appeared... Offensive pass interference. Now here's the question. Do you want to take it and give Gerard another shot and push him back out of field goal range? I'm guessing that they probably will take it and push them back, back to the 30. I would think they want to take this penalty. Make it, yeah. Penalties decline. Fourth down. Which, which shows why I'm up here, obviously. <laughs> well, of course, now they're going to kick the field goal, and I guess that just goes to show the confidence that they have in their offense, not so much their defense. Is to say, we can score a touchdown. We'll force them just to kick the field goal. This will be from 40 yards away. Well, let's see. Uh, it's going to be, Steve, it's going to be around 37, 38 yards. Miller's long this season is 43. 
He does have a 52-yard field goal in his college career. It will be 37 times. Steve, this year he has been perfect inside of 40. 12 for 12 coming into this game. Three for three tonight. Snap, place is good, and the field goal is up, Whoa. and it is good. It just got through. Kevin Miller connects from 37, and he's given East Carolina a three-point lead. That one falls under the heading of knuckleball. Phil Negro would have been proud of that one. I'm sorry, that dates. Tim Wakefield would have been proud of that. Dennis Springer would have been proud of that. Steve How's Sparks. That? Steve, thank you. I'm, I'm out of well knuckleballers done. now. <laughs> there is Miller. You can see the reaction of, of, of Coach Pruitt. He knew that that was kind of off. It was kind of a funny kick, but he said, oh, what the heck? We'll just have to come down here and see if we can score a touchdown. That's a chip shot for the former East Carolina member of the golf team, Kevin Miller. And loading it up one more time. At least Carolina have to score again. See what Marshall will do. First and ten now. The 25. Trailing by three. Leftwich. His arm's got to be tired. Throwing. Got him in at the five. And it's the narrow Marriott. And Marriott was more bumped down than he was tackled. That was nearly ball game. Steve, all night long when they rush three and they have the two deep zone, it, the short corner has been there over and over again, and Leftwich has been able to deliver it on the money. This is first and goal. They won't need to kick an extra point if they get in the end zone. Here's Franklin Wallace. Forget about the end zone. That's a loss on the play. Loss of two. Bad decision by Wallace. You've got to stay, as they say, with your friends. The play was designed to go between the tackles. Once he came outside, he was by himself, and the pursuit caught up. Keith now with his eighth tackle of the game. Second down and goal. Ball to six and a half. And what that loss does, Steve, now is it takes away a little bit the idea if he was at the two or three, they could still run the ball. Here, I'm guessing that they're going to have to throw. Three receivers to his right. Byron Leftwich. Leftwich is going to his left. Hard to bring down. Not that hard. There's another loss of two on the play, and that pushes him back to the eight-yard line. Very surprised at that because, as I say, once you're outside the five-yard line, don't want to be in a third down conversion situation. You want to get it up top and throw it into the end zone. We know that he scored once on that play going to his left, but his forte obviously is throwing the ball. Give credit to the Pirates for excellent pursuit. Third and goal. Curtis had the kicker who might be called on to try and tie this game. Has struggled with his last couple of extra points. Missing one and just nailing another one. So here's third and goal now from the eight. The blitz. Leftwich steps up and throws, and it is caught. There is a flag down. Josh Davis has it for the touchdown of the end zone. There is a flag down. And it's holding. It's against East Carolina, and Marshall wins. Davis. Watts and Marriott have had problems with drops all night, but when it's counted most, Watts, the tying touchdown catch, and Davis in overtime able to hang on. No extra point is necessary. Steve, you and I have done a lot of games, and I'm not going to get into 64-61 and all that other stuff right now. But the one thing I got to tell you is, is that if ever we have had a game where a young man lived up to the height, it was this one in terms of Byron Leftwich. That young man was outstanding. He's coming back for his senior season at Marshall. And here he is throwing that dart. Look at that throw. And really, that was a tough catch in the hands by Davis. That's got to be an excited young man. But again, the guy that deserves all the kudos is number seven. Playing through the hits, playing through everything else. Steve, 41 for 70. 577 yards and four touchdowns. Unbelievable. This has been a presentation of ESPN2. The